Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Surprised by her boyfriend's sudden jealous and temperamental attitude, Tiffany Bray is a woman needing to discover the reality of her situation. Using her intuition as a guide, Tiffany requests assistance from a reliable institution. I'm Joey Greco. And this is Cheaters. Everybody, my friends always talk about how lovey-dovey we were. Like, we always sit under each other, hold hands, boo this, boo that. And now it's kind of like, I come in the house, he walk out the house. You know, when I got a new job, when I started working for the airport, he was like, I don't think you should take it because you're not going to be home as much. And I was kind of like, they paid more, you know? So why not make the career change? But I did understand where he was coming from. Like when I am home, instead of him saying, okay, let's catch a movie, let's go hang out, it's, I gotta work late. Go kick it with such and such. I gotta work late, call Savannah. I gotta work late, call Vivi. And it's like, I came home to see you. I don't care about that right now. The whole cell phone lock thing, the sitting in his car talking on the phone, like instead of just getting out when you pull up, he'll sit in the car for a minute, be on the phone. And what is it locked for? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is your cell phone, that's whatever, but it didn't, it didn't used to be locked. So what is it locked for now? Yeah, I'm kind of frustrated. Like, I'm boiling a little bit because what happens if, if he is fooling with somebody, she getting the same treatment I used to get at the beginning. You know, they don't work like that. And stuff just keeps adding up. Like, to me, two plus two equals four. And for your routine to be going straight ahead and all of a sudden you just going left, right, left, right, mm -mm. You know, nah, I, don't, I don't know. Something's wrong, and I know it. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Suspect's identity withheld. Age 34. An insurance manager accused of stimulating full coverage on another woman. Investigation day two. With a perimeter set around the suspect's place of employment, agents on duty dig in and prepare for the chase to begin. It turns out they don't have to wait long as the suspect's vehicle is seen exiting from the private parking garage from under the skyscraper. Mobile units follow their mark until he arrives at an unknown apartment complex. Visual confirmation of the suspect, whose identity remains withheld, is noted as he walks from his car to an unknown unit. Tiffany's boyfriend knocks on the door and is let inside. The suspect remains unseen for a number of minutes before he reappears with an unknown female. The suspect follows his friend to her car and shows his machismo by demanding to drive. Mobile units track the pair to a nearby car spa. The couple drop off the companion's ride for detail service and wait by the lobby. The spa workers are not the only ones to get busy. The suspect seems perfectly comfortable keeping his bird from falling off her perch. Once the job is done, the suspect pays for the hand-dry service and the couple return to her apartment complex. He escorts his consort inside before returning to his car and going home for the evening. Investigation Day 4. As the suspect leaves work for the evening, mobile units follow as he pulls into the same apartment complex from earlier surveillance. Tiffany's boyfriend exits his car and enters his friend's apartment. He is inside for some time before they exit together. The suspect's companion, now identified only as Shelley, again leads the way to her car. Mobile units pursue the duo to an auto parts store. They enter together and soon emerge with a large bottle of windshield wiper fluid. The suspect must be a jack of all trades. First, he fills up her empty tank, but is negligent in securing the trunk. After fixing that problem, he drives across the road to a coffee shop. The two order lattes and then return to Shelley's apartment and disappear inside. 
They are inside for less than an hour before it's time for the suspect to leave. Shelley walks out with her handyman and sees him off with a soft kiss and a long hug goodbye. Investigation day five. Following a familiar pattern, the suspect exits work and drives to Shelley's place. Across from her apartment complex, the suspect makes a pit stop at a convenience store. He enters, makes his purchase, and continues on to Shelley's. The confidence in his duplicity is on display in this recorded phone call with Tiffany. Hey, babe, what are you doing? Um, so I'm just in a rush right now. I'm trying to eat some grub. Why is it quiet if you're at lunch? Well, maybe you happen to catch me, like, in the bathroom. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, kind of doing business right now, babe. I mean... You just said you eat some grub, but now all of a sudden you're in the bathroom? I told you the first part of that, because that's what I'm doing. I'm having lunch, but... You know, people do go to the bathroom and have all these deaths and say, why are you tripping? Yeah, you're definitely still of it, so go ahead and release it. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. With all the evidence they need, detectives call it a day and begin compiling the data for Tiffany's approval. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's dubious behavior captured on tape, Tiffany is summoned to review the findings. Though nervous about what she'll discover, she remains cool in the face of her future. Tiffany, thank you for being with us this afternoon. I know you came back early from your trip. I know that's part of what you do as a profession. Well, Tiffany, I know you've been very patient. I know this has gone on for a considerable amount of time. Yeah. Our detectives do have some information. Would you care to see that? Yeah. Tiffany, as we began our investigation, we had a detective that was outside of place of employment. He leaves work, and our detective followed him until he arrived at an apartment complex. Mm-hmm. Now, goes into one of the hallways, Who is that? knocks on a door, exits mm -hmm. with a young lady. They get into a car that we believe to be hers, go to a car wash, and as they go inside, pay their bill, they wait for the cleaning to be complete, and we observe the two of them sidling up to one another, evidently pleased with the job the attendant has done, there's a high five. They go back to her apartment. He exits and returns home for the evening. On this day, pretty much the same drill. He leaves work, gets in his car, goes back to the same apartment complex, exits with the same young lady. They get in her car, but on this day, they go to an auto parts store, exit with something that appears to be washer fluid, I'm only guessing. He goes ahead and puts some in, and he places the rest in her trunk. They stop at a coffee shop on their way home, drops her off, but goes inside for a short period of time. When they return to the car, she walks him out, and now we see a romantic exchange between the two of them. It's getting close to the end of the work day mm -hmm. for why don't we go ahead and load up in the van, okay. and then we'll call the detective, see if there's been any movement, see if he's left work, okay. and he can give us an update. Okay? okay. All right, why don't you come with me? Excuse me one second. There's a detective. Yeah. They're at a restaurant just off McKinney. Detective's there with him now. Okay. McKinney, park in the back. There's an alley. Okay, we're on our way. Okay, you want to do this? I'm ready. Joe, okay. you're gonna go wait right there in that little alley. They're right around the corner. We're gonna wait on Danny to come get us. Okay. All right, there he is. Delta. Delta. Hey, hey, hey. Did you bring me a plate too? How you doing, ma'am? Hi. What's your name? Shelly. How you doing, Shelly? Hi. 
My name is Tiffany. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Uh huh. What's that? <laughs> what the? F what Did you order you me some food? Oh, baby, listen. Uh, what you, what Tiffany, you? no baby, Tiffany. No. What, what you, you ain't gotta go, baby. No. You, you can sit down. No, I'll talk to you later. Hold up, hold up. Wait, wait. Listen, no, listen, Michelle, listen. you don't gotta leave. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Coming up next, the conclusion. Did you bring me a plate, too? My name is Tiffany. It's nice to meet you. I'll talk to you later. Hold, hold up, hold up. Wait, wait. No. Mama, just... just... Perfect to come here. Just chill out, Mom. Look, look here. This hey, is not... you guys can look wherever you are. You guys need a permit to film the restaurant, right? Miss, can you help me with some information? Uh, hey, guys, mm -hmm. Baby, you guys can go over there. I'm sorry, sir. No, you can stay. What, what you, no, 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 no. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second, Mom. Look, For what? Look, 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 Mom. I, what, what you? I, I, that's, I, a home, I, that's a home girl of mine. That's a home girl of mine. If that was the case, she wouldn't have left. You know what? This, this you had this coming. I did. You had this coming. How? You know what? I'm not even gonna do this. Get this camera's out of my face, man. Oh, you upset? <laughs> Why are you mad? <laughs> I don't have no time, man. Move. I don't have no time for this. <gasps> Where you going? <laughs> Where you going? You don't want to talk about you it. You know what? You want to talk? Yeah. yeah. You, you want to be for real about it? Let's talk about it. Let's get first of all these damn cameras out the way. No. First of all, let's do that. Why don't y'all move out the way? Why? I don't need all this. It's you evident to the head in public to all along. We've been together for five years, but you want to get the whole crew out here? Uh-huh. Huh? Yeah. Why not? Why not? I don't know where you went. Okay. Doing all this modeling stuff. Uh huh. You traveling. Uh huh. You going everywhere. Uh huh. You ain't taking care of none of my needs. Nothing. I gave you the opportunity to leave. You should have. I didn't ask for this. It's not happening right now. It's not yes, happening. it is. You got everybody here. Is yeah. Obama here? Peekaboo. Where's Obama at? <laughs> I don't see him. Spotlight on you, sweetie. Can you have a conversation and not worry about the cameras with Tiffany? Why does she bring the cameras in the first place is what I'm worried about. I mean, Same reason why you brought Shelly to a restaurant. But can you see why she had to? Because because you were you, you weren't being honest with her. That's why. <laughs> I mean the answer you is. You wanna talk about honesty? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about honesty. Let's talk okay. about how she has she she goes out till four in the morning, says she's doing a job, comes in. <laughs> I don't I, I don't get tender to none of my needs. She comes and goes out, went to the R. Kelly concert. I didn't see her again. I don't know what happened. Okay, but if but if you were unhappy with the relationship and the way it was going, why didn't you end it? Look, baby, you know, you know I love you. Tiffany? Tiffany? You know no, I, baby. You know, you know I love you. That's for the birds. Really? Shelly! I told you what that is. Shelly! Move, 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 move. Shelly! <laughs> wow, really? Really? Look, please, please look I didn't know he had a please girlfriend. Let her know. And I respect please that, though, know. because you didn't know. I respect it, so it's not that. No, I'm I like, what, boo? Whoa. You've been talking to me for like two weeks. Whoa. You didn't tell me you had no girlfriend. If I would have knew that, I would Five not years. have been over there. Five I mean, years in the game, you, Shelly. Okay? okay. <laughs> you didn't know? It's okay, Shelly. First of all, it's not you first of all <laughs> no, like I told you sometimes my cousin sleeps on the couch. Wow, I didn't say together. that. Get yourself together, okay? I said sometimes he <laughs> okay. sleeps on the you couch. You can go home with her. Uh, oh, no. He good. Okay? Mama, you can actually that's ride with us. That, no, that's can not. catch a cab. <laughs> no, that's no. okay. You good. Look, look, if we ain't gonna talk about it, let's me and you talk about it. Is that my yellow cab? Whoop. See you later. Bye, Shelly. <laughs> Baby, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Man, get the... Thank you. Right. Keep moving that camera out of my face, man. I'm trying to talk to my woman. And... Move, man. Baby girl, listen to me. Listen to me. Ah, 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 you're too close. Fall back. Fall back. L listen, babe. Listen. I saw what I saw. It is what First it is, all, and that's that. Okay, no. You didn't keep it between me and you. You decided to get America involved in what we got. Tell them how. You didn't say, 
Oh, for real? That's how it is? <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I should have known with your ass on Facebook, you like to be in the spotlight. So right now, I ain't... I help you, boo. Left, huh? I'm sorry. Huh? Goodbye. You, you got to be seen. You can come and get your things. I'll be gone for the next two days. Just make sure when I get back, it's gone. What is left is going to the trash. So I'm giving you, you two days. Do not throw my out. You got two days. Do not throw my out. I have two days. You're going to regret this. No way. I don't need my mama seeing this. My grandmother, my family. That <laughs> is so crazy. I just want to get back to my car. Following the confrontation, Tiffany's relieved to finally know the truth. Stay tuned when we update you on the results of her epiphany. But first, Clarice, the suspect from the Robert Gaiman case, comes in to spew her form of the truth when caught red-handed by cheaters. Yes, I did cheat on Robert. It was pretty easy, really at the time. I think I was just being kind of really greedy. I think I'm just like that. What the? Hey, hey. Easy, guys. Hey. Hey, get in there. Stop. 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 I guess it's almost like he thinks he's better than me or something. And I, I think it was different with Sean because I just felt appreciated, and I know that Robert would, you know, showed that he appreciated me, and he would, was was working very hard, but I just didn't feel it, I guess, and I got bored. And... What is this? What is this? That's. When did I see this? Huh? When did I see this? What is? Who you send this to? Send this to him? Do you ever even pay attention to me? You're always. Hey, you. You don't Where's... even listen to me when I'm. She's a... Yeah. Robert is just so uh, serious, and uh, when Robert wasn't around, I would just kind of forget about him. Look, it was just for fun, okay? What do you mean it's for it's fun? Just, Robert, for fun? It's just for fun, please. You're just never, you're never around. I'd rather be poor and happy, be rich and miserable, and you're just never here. Listen to me. You know, I'm. Please, 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 forgive me. I just feel like a, a bird, you know, like in a cage or something. Like, I don't want to stay at home and wait for you and all the time. I wanted to do, just, I didn't want to wait on somebody like that. I guess I was just tired of. The feeling like like I was second or something. Finally able to bring closure to her suspicions, Tiffany Bray claims that a huge weight has been lifted from her heart. She says that she's happier now than she has been in months and is finally living her life for herself. As for the suspect, he claims that Tiffany has it all wrong and that he was doing nothing wrong. He asserts that his relationship with Shelley was nothing more than two close friends who supported each other. When questioned by Cheaters producers, Shelley confirmed that she and the suspect were... ...turns to those with their own electronic methods. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, we've been together for 12 years, and... Uh... You know, she's, she's beautiful and uh, just a lot of fun. You know, we used to go to the clubs every weekend, and now it's like she just, she wants to sit at home, you know? And I'm like, okay, so you want to just watch a movie together? And she's just, she'll go sit at the computer. She just doesn't talk to me anymore. Well, you know, turning 40 on her was, was pretty tough. It seemed like it was depressing to her, and, you know, she was worried about how she looked now. and. So uh, I bought her boobs, you know, I got her some boobs and got her a boob job and uh, yeah, it seemed to help, you know. She was bouncy again, wanted to go out for a while and then it's just like she went right back to where it was again, just real distant, you know, wasn't coming to bed with me. 
I don't know. I feel like I'm just taking care of somebody. You know, like I'm being used. Like all I am is a a, a place to stay and a, and a paycheck. You know, somebody who's giving her money. It hurts. I'm really worried that she's seeing somebody. Um, worried about, you know, what's going to happen if she does leave. I don't know, I'm going to be a wreck. I, I hope it's just not true. I'll be a mess. Uh, it won't be good. I'm really just tore up. I'm confused all the time. Having a hard time doing my job because it's all I'm thinking about anymore. I'm just really worried I'm losing her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Mrs. Voss, age 43, a housewife accused of giving her heart to another man. Investigation day two, Cheater's detective set up a perimeter around the home Greg Voss and his wife share. A few hours into the investigation, PIs spot Greg's wife, identified only as Mrs. Voss, exiting her home. She hustles out to her SUV and speeds away. Voss soon arrives at a bar and grill. She parks her vehicle and enters. Ground units follow their mark inside and watch as she has a beer, making herself comfortable in her surroundings. Soon after she settles in, an unknown male approaches from behind and surprises her with a light touch. They warmly greet each other with a hug and settle down for an evening of conversation and intoxication. A few hours later, the unknown male stands up gives Mrs. Voss another hug and leaves. She leaves shortly after, ending this day of surveillance. Investigation day five. Cheaters operatives have once again set up shop around the client and suspect's residence. Hours into their shift, agents spy the suspect exiting her home and again departing in her SUV. Mobile units follow the suspect to a dingy little dive bar. She enters and immediately meets up with her companion from previous surveillance, now positively identified as Danny Sims. An extensive background check on Sims reveals him to be a previous boyfriend of Mrs. Voss. Reliving their glory days of foosball, the two spin handles and pop balls into goals, laughing and cavorting as they reconnect. Just getting revved up, the two move to the dance floor. There, they show off their late 80s dancing skills. A number of drinks later, the party moves outdoors to the parking lot. The clandestine couple climb into the back seat of Mrs. Voss's vehicle, presumably to resume their dancing in a horizontal position. As Mrs. Voss prepares for the missionary position, it's her husband who feels impoverished in this recorded phone call. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Once the music ends, companion Sims climbs out, buttoning his shirt, followed by suspect Voss, who also is adjusting her clothing. Smiling broadly, Mrs. Voss hugs her beau, sends him on his way back into the bar while she returns home for the night. Investigation Day 8. Remaining stationed outside the Voss residence, Cheater's PIs are surprised when they spot companion Sims pulling up to the curb. Sims exits his car and knocks on the front door. Interior cameras, placed earlier by Greg, capture Mrs. Voss demanding a hug and kiss before letting Sims enter. She directs him to the sofa, where he lounges while she procures refreshments. They toast one another and take a drink. Apparently, Sims doesn't dig the cocktail. Mrs. Voss, the eager host, goes into the kitchen and retrieves two of Greg's beers. While the beer man enjoys his tall boy, Mrs. Voss stands and gives her companion a show not available by her cable provider. As Sims tries to slide his hands to the promised land, suspect Voss coyly slaps his hands away. 
Knowing exactly what he wants, Voss stands her man up and leads him to the bedroom. With more than enough evidence of infidelity, investigators return to headquarters and ready the information for Greg's analysis. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's betrayal indisputable, Greg is contacted to review the evidence. Anxious about the results, Greg prepares himself for the worst before viewing the proof. First, I want to say, Greg, thank you for uh, coming out here today. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I understand no that you just got off, just came from yeah. a shift yeah. of work. Yeah, just got off work. Well, we conducted our investigation. Are you ready to see what we came up with? Yeah, I guess so. All right, fair enough. On this day of surveillance, we're outside of your home. Comes outside, looks like she's texting on her phone, gets in her vehicle. Our detectives follow her to this parking lot, which is a bar. And she gets out of her car, goes inside, sits down, grabs a beer, and a few moments later, this gentleman comes up, grabs her on the shoulder. You recognize him? No, I've never seen him before. Gives her a hug, it looked like they've met each other before. And she, he sits down and she puts her hand on his shoulder, looks like she's talking, they're just kind of chatting back and forth. Some more time passes, they're still at the bar. A few moments later, that's when he gets up, gives her a kiss on the cheek, hugs her, and leaves. On this day of investigation, we are outside of your house once again. You recall that surveillance equipment that we gave you? Yeah, the ones I put in my house. Yes, exactly. Yeah. This is from inside your house. Danny comes inside, comes to the door. I'm sorry, man, I know this is really hard to watch. I just want to get you through this and get you your answers. She lets him inside, and from what I understand, this is a night and you're at work right now, bouncing, correct? Uh -huh. Probably so. He sits on your couch, and that's when she grabs a TV remote, puts something on the television. They have some no drinks. My house. Your house. See, she went, got two beers out of the fridge, Bring some on. That's probably your beer that you bought. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, that's when you can see her. Looks like she's sitting on his lap, rubbing the back of his head. She stands up, gets in front of him, starts doing a little dance. And that's when he lifts her dress. She slaps his hand. Unreal. And a few moments later, they go into your bedroom. Let me see that. And close the door. So they're out right now? They're out right now, yes. I'm gonna find out exactly where they are, but yeah, they're out. What's going on, detective? Yep. Go ahead, you're on right. speaker. After Greg left for work, uh, we just picked it still outside of his house. Uh, Danny came and picked up and they've gone back to the same bar that they always go to, it looks like. Okay. We will be on our way shortly, then you have eyes on them. Uh, we have eyes on them. I'll have to take outside, waving you in. You know where you're going. Uh, call me when you hit the road. All right, thank you. Mm. All right, bye. Are you ready to go? Let's go. All right, let's go. Right this way. We're probably going to be there in about 30 seconds. Our detective's going to be outside. He's going to let us know exactly where to go. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I want to see this guy. I want to ask her why. I want to know why. what's going on. Is that the place? That is the place right there. Here's our detective. Let's go. Come on. Excuse me. Coming up, the conclusion.
touching him. Can you tell me why your exactly husband get to this point? What's your problem? What do you think of you? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. No. Why, 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 why would you cheat on your husband? Why would you get to this point of anger? I'm not cheating on my husband. You're not? I need to borrow that really quick. I need to borrow that. So you're not cheating on your husband? No. Not at all? No. So you're telling me that this is not you? <laughs> Who's this? Out here? Wait. Danny, can I, can I get some go, questions go, from go, you? Go, Danny. Go. you. Oh, wait, wait, don't. Don't hurt Danny. him. Don't hurt him. Danny. Who are you? I'm Clark with Cheaters. <laughs> dude, no, man, don't get pissed at me, dude. I'm just, I'm just trying to get your answers, dude. You man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What about those three girls? What about the two what girls? What three girls? How old were they? How old were what they? What no girls? Yes, those three girls. You know what I'm talking about. Tell me how old were they? Huh? Tell me. Tell me how old were they? Oh, what are you talking about? Were they in high school? How old were they? You know what I'm talking about. Did you about? have any idea that she You're was lying. married? I'm not discussing it with you guys. It's just a simple question, dude. Who the f are you? Her husband. Come on, let's just go. Dude, you ain't going to choice him. right now Shut between up. your husband and this back. guy. Yeah. You're going to walk away with this drama? I, I, I don't want to Come on, let's just come home. Let's go. Come on. He's asking to come home and you're just leaving with a random stranger from high school. Yeah. You ain't going with him. Shut up. Oh, away from my truck, dude. Stop you, man. It. Stop it. Come on. No, just stop it. What did he do for no. you? You know, no. knock no. your ass out. I'm Try it, bitch. Back up. Stop it. Back up. If you love him, why would you be leaving with him? Go with him. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Danny, you have nothing to say? Fair enough. Mother you. You, man. Let's go. Get your ass out. What are you going to do? Get your ass out of here. You better get your ass out of here. Just go I just have home. one question. Just go home right Why now. are you just doing go this home. to your husband? Let me just, just talk to him. Hey, no, not... just go home. I'll talk to you Come on, let's talk. You want to go with him? You want to go home with him? No. Come on, baby. Get off, dude. Get At least give him the ring back if you're going to do this. Bitch. Come get your ass. He wants answers from you. She doesn't want to give an answer. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Let's Everyone, go. Load it up, load it up. What? You're coming back. You're right behind us. Let's follow him. I wanna go talk to him, man. Do it. Oh, oh, right there, right there, right there, right there. What do you wanna do? Huh? Honey, I'm sorry. Forget sorry? I'm sorry. Why? I'm sorry. Why? Just tell me about those three girls. I don't Just know what three girls you're talking girls. about. How old were they? Tell me. There was no three were. girls. There were three girls I've seen. No, is that why? I know why? all about it, yes. You think I'm cheating? I know all about it. Tell me all, all right. about it. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You're everything to me. Everything. I love you, baby. Mm -hmm. Just come home. Okay. Just come home. Just come home, baby. Just come home. Just come home. Just come home. Hmm? Just come home. What are we doing? She's gonna come home. Alright, cool. Let's go. What are you thinking? Do you think your husband loves you now? Yeah. What were you thinking? What exactly happened that made you want to cheat on this man? That's you're that, everything. You're just not there for me anymore. You're I work so I much. I saw those pictures. I work so I much. I'm at home alone. Hey, we got to make sleep. money. I got to. I got to make money to take care of us. We got to have food and a place to stay. You know. I think you guys need to have just a better line of communication between the two of you. Because, I mean, the, you guys I'll have been together for 12 job. years. Why? I'll quit my night job. Yes. Why throw all that away? Never. After the confrontation, Greg admits he needs some time to reassess the situation. At the end of the show, we'll disclose his ultimate decision. But next, Cheetahs presents Marcus Elias, 
a former suspect wishing to discuss his willing participation in an affair when caught by his girlfriend on cheaters. I, I think I had said I was going to be with my boys, and so for for uh, for Michelle to roll up on us like that and then have the cameras, I knew automatically that, it, that there wasn't any way for me to justify it. And then, boom, the lights hit. It didn't really dawn on me at the time that it was cheaters. What the hell is your problem? I know this ain't the bitch you had up in my house. No. What, what the hell are you doing over here with her? We, we was huh? drinking some drinks. And what the, what the hell you was doing up in my house? What is going on? Huh? What is this? What, what is, what do you mean, what is this? What is huh? going you on? You had her up in my damn house? No. Are you no. serious? What is going on? Yeah. Are you no. serious? No. What you mean? What a lot of people don't know is that, you know, she was always going out of town saying she was going for business, and, uh, you know, trying to boost her career or whatever, but uh, she was actually out there, you know, taking guys on trips with her too. And, uh, you know, it, I kind of had my suspicions after she had told me, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't have thought to do anything like this. But I did. I mean, okay, but you cheated on me. I didn't cheat on you. You cheated on me first. So how you gonna try to come at me like you? Did I bring anybody in our house? Did I bring anybody in our house? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. No. You try to tell me about it like it was like it never. You told me you forgave me. I think this uh, experience has taught me a lot. You know, I, I'll uh, definitely take my time in relationships going forward now. You know, if something doesn't seem right, you know, and maybe I'll call you guys, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? No, uh, try to talk about it. Um, but yeah, this, this is definitely, uh, definitely a life lesson. Um, I don't wanna go through this again. Greg Voss admits that the breakdown of his marriage will take lots of work on both sides if he and his wife are to stay together. He has opted for couples counseling and says that now that he's opened up avenues of communication, his love for his wife has bloomed into a veritable blossom. Mrs. Voss expresses regret that she hurt Greg, but also claims that her marriage had gotten a bit stale and that all she needed was some attention. Danny Sims has only one regret, that he wasn't given free reign to defend himself. He loudly boasts, if that old man hadn't ambushed me, and if the cameras hadn't been there, and those security guys hadn't been there, and that Gable guy hadn't been there, well, let's just say that things would have gotten... Now you're a comedian. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Despite a past of hardship, Eve Cullen is a loving and civic-minded woman. Recently, however, she's noticed her relationship suffering as a result of her passions. Afraid that her boyfriend may be seeking comfort with another woman, she asks for help from a trusted source. I'm Joey Greco, and this is Cheaters. When you've been with someone for six years, you kind of pick up on things that other people don't see, you know, and I can tell right away when something's bothering him. He just sits in front of the television with a beer and goes to sleep in the recliner. He doesn't even, you know, give me any attention. I don't understand why, when he gets breaks and a lunch, why he can't find time to call me or to answer my text to let me know, you know, how he's doing. Or, you know, now he's just giving me a hard time. He, you know, when I'm getting ready to go to work, he'll come in the bathroom and he'll say, why are you uh, wearing your hair like that? Or why is that a different perfume you're wearing? Are you trying to impress someone? You know, is there there's somebody else? And that's ridiculous. I would never cheat on him. If this is really what I think it is, I just want him to be honest with me and man up to it 
and either we work it out or he lets me go. <laughs> I don't want to waste any more of my time taking care of this man if he isn't even serious about our relationship. <laughs> If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheater's Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Brian Hill, age 41. A speculator accused of becoming a resource for another woman. Investigation Day 1. With guidance provided by Eve, detectives intercept the suspect leaving work and arriving at an unknown building. The suspect, Brian Hill, enters the high-rise office building. Half an hour later, perimeter units spot the suspect with an unknown female in his company. The two depart in Hill's car and soon arrive at a nearby real estate property. After inspecting the home, the couple depart. Mobile units are soon a part of the tour that Hill takes with his real estate companion. Mobile units track the couple through a number of homes for sale before ultimately returning to the parking lot of Hill's companion's place of employment. Investigators make note of the affectionate body language the two display. Hill escorts his friend to her car and kisses her goodbye. He then returns home for the evening. Investigation Day 3. With Eve working late, investigators remain vigilant outside her home. With little movement since the suspect returned home from work, detectives perk up as Hill exits the front door, accompanied by his three large wolves. Mobile units follow to a nearby park. Once there, his realtor, now identified only as Sylvia, meets Hill. The woman seems very comfortable with the canines. She pets each of them on the head. The couple strolls through the park with Sylvia taking the reins of one of the animals. The two hold hands and pause by the lake for a loving smooch. Having walked over a mile, the two rest their bodies on a park bench. Sylvia takes the lead and leans in for a long lip lock with Hill. The pooches seem uncomfortable tied to a fence while their master is trading kisses with a new woman. After some time, the couple end their late-night rendezvous and return to their cars. They kiss goodbye and depart each other's company for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 5. Mobile units keep close tabs on their mark as he leaves his home for the evening. He soon arrives at a nearby restaurant. Outside, a well-dressed Sylvia meets him. Hill admires his date, twirling her around to take her all in. The couple then enter the establishment and take a seat. They enjoy some wine with their dinner. Upon finishing, they exit and are followed back to the suspect and client's residence. Internal surveillance cameras placed inside by Eve come alive and capture the couple on the couch, drinking a little more wine. The two seem extremely comfortable with each other, with Hill caressing his cohort's long legs. The two talk for a while as Hill massages the feet of his realtor. His deplorable actions are only reinforced by this recorded phone call with Eve. Hey, baby, what's up? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I hope you're missing me. You kind of hurt me away so much. Maybe you can uh, have something nice for me when I get home. <laughs> What's that going to be exactly? Uh, I shouldn't be too much longer. Can you give me a, can you give me a time? Maybe two, three hours. With enough evidence to close the case, agents pack up their equipment and return to headquarters to begin compiling the data for Eve's review. Coming up, the confrontation. With her boyfriend's deceitful activities uncovered, Cheaters assembles the information for Eve's review. Emotionally drained from worry, she summons the strength to view the truth. Eve, thank you for making yourself available for us this evening. I know the circumstances that you find yourself in regarding your relationship with Brian 
are disquieting for you. We stand here this evening because our detectives have acquired some information that they thought it was imperative for you to see. Are you ready to look at that now? Yes. Eve, as our investigation began, our detectives followed Brian late this afternoon as he left work. He was followed to a business park, went inside, exited a short time later with a young lady. Now, evidently, this person seems to work in the real estate industry as she and Brian went about viewing various condos and townhomes that were on the market. Now, after they've seen a number of homes, they go back to the office and just as the real estate agent goes to get into her car, we see the first sign of affection as they share a kiss. On our second day, we have detectives again outside of your home. Brian leaves, goes to a restaurant, and meets the same young lady. We can see that he's got a high time planned as their greeting seems quite spirited. They go inside, share a bite to eat, some drinks, but now they return to your home. That's great. Early in our investigation, we had you place a hidden camera inside the living room with the surveillance that these cameras were able to capture. We see that Brian is entertaining her with what the a hell? foot massage. Oh my God. Things become heated. They both exit to another area of the house. And sometime later when they return, she appears quite disheveled. Brian is in a state of undress. <laughs> No, excuse me one second. I'm just getting a text. Okay, we're getting some new information, which will make sense in just a moment. I just want to finish up here. Okay. Eve, when we contacted you earlier, it was because Brian left work today, and he picked up the same young lady at her office, and they were looking at homes. Our detective just contacted me. They have wrapped up that piece of business and now are back at your home. Are you certain that you want to continue and confront Brian? Yes. Okay, why don't you come with me and we'll call the detective from the car. Excuse me one second, here's a detective. Yes. Okay, they left the house. Hey, they left the house and they took the wolves and went to the same park that we saw in their surveillance. Okay, we'll head there right now. All right, just check us at the entrance. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. Go over on this side. Hey, camera. Let's go, back up. Come on. How deep? Probably about 100 yards. All right. Just have the wolves push them. Are they on the path? Right there. Right there. Here, come this way. Watch your step. What the hell is this? What the f is going on? Are you out of your mind? Surprise, bitches! You just got busted. Coming up, the conclusion. And they took the wolves and went to the same park that we saw in the surveillance. Are you out of your mind? Surprise, bitches! You just got busted. Shut Crazy. Hey, 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 ladies, ladies, Bring ladies. Up, ladies. Let's settle down. I want to talk to you. What are you doing here? Getting Shut up. Time? Shut up. Good job. What, you know, miss, I don't, she did got, you, did you know he lives with someone? Just, out of, yeah, you got your camera crew and your Jerry Springer go, sideshow. Oh, whoa, whoa. What the hell are you doing? What do you think? What, I, what do you this? care? What do you care? You haven't cared for three years. Yeah, well, we wouldn't need to be here if you didn't handle your business. Would you stop? No. Stop hiding behind your damn oh mongrels God, and talk to me. Mongrels, whatever. You gotta go this way. After whatever. six years, wow. you owe six me an explanation for what you're you doing. Are you crazy? <laughs> She's a joke. Who the hell 
are you? Who the hell are you to tell me to leave my boyfriend hey, alone? So you, got, hey, you, got, you, you got your camera time. You should be happy. You can go play Sarah Palin up your political beanstalk. Oh, go to hell! Yeah, I've already well, Brian, been there. That was when I was with you. If you yes, moved on with the relationship, why didn't you? Why didn't you let let Eve know? If you were so over it. No, we. Do you, you want know, to get bit by old? Go to hell, bitch! Oh my the time I'm for talking, talking to him. Oh get now, your damn hands off of him! Now you don't have any say so anymore. Just go, go play. You know, go play. I got politics. plenty to say. That's not. Nah, that's that's really funny coming from you. Yeah. Well, all you care about is those I told you, ask to stay back. We just want to get out of here. You guys are idiots. How long have you been? him in my bed you don't you, didn't, you don't even care you nasty you ass care. i bet you didn't even change the damn sheets oh stop and talk to me damn no, it i told you we're done he's talking he's done with you okay, ladies, what ladies. the hell are you mean he's okay, done with okay, me ladies, ladies. since when You're i want to know long. since when it's been a long i've been time. with him yeah. six damn years better take this bitch out of my you! Oh, damn it! Kick your ass! <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Okay. So damn it! Like try it! Try it! Bitch! Home wrecking bitch! <laughs> I get you go to hell. He's not happy with you. I don't give a what you say. Get the hell off me! Right. You the one bringing the circus on? Bye. What Bye. the? Bye. What the? He's mine. No, incorrect. I'm not yours. Get out of here. You have to get out of my. Go to hell! Who do you think you are? You Jesus or something? You're some kind of martyr? I think I'm great. That's who I think I am. Right. If you were unhappy with the way things were going, why didn't you move out? I am moving out. Okay, yeah, but you haven't told I anyone. I want you to get your you her. out. I you paid the out. out. Do you He's hear me? Get you your out. La, 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 la. Uh, See, you know that? Very uh, hard. So very you ought to know. Okay. Spell retard. You want your... It's gonna be on fire if you don't get it out of my house tonight. Guys, let's get in a little room. It's like Barnum and Bailey, Jerry Springer, Sarah Palin Circus. We wouldn't need to be here if you'd be able to handle your business. Do you love this woman? I'm not in love with anybody right now. We just have fun. You together. don't even love her, and you're gonna move in with her. He hates you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Do you know, bitch? Oh, I know more than you. you damn tramp. Yeah. Why are you doing this to me? You did it to me a long time ago. Victim. I've been oh with him God. six oh, years. Well, isn't, this, isn't this the song he was singing just, just five ridiculous. minutes ago? If he was able to have this conversation with her, we wouldn't need to be here. Oh, boy. I tried and tried and tried. He just wait. He'll do you, you the tried same to way. What? I you tried. I tried he to let her know. He cheated on you. Where, where you? you? He said never, he didn't even love you. You just said that you stuck around because you thought you had something. You put up with his little... I don't want him anymore. I can do better anyway. <laughs> yeah, I can see. They created the circus your thing. First political, uh, whatever the your hell. Your first political lie. That was great. Yeah, well, at least day. I got a lie. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Tramp. Some mongrels. Right. Uh -huh. That's all you got. Yeah, well, and three you legs. You loser. You're going to die alone. Fat um, and bald. Better than dying with you. Yeah, with little lip. Shut up. Have a nice career. Bastard. I hope you wreck. Sarah Palin, my best. You right? Yeah. I'm glad to get him out of my life. After the confrontation, Eve is shocked by her boyfriend's callous actions. Stay tuned when we reveal whether or not she returns to the pack. But now, Ray Ray returns to reveal his distinctive point of view when confronted by Sharonda Epps on Cheaters. I was giving the edge up to one of my customers, you know. I just see, you know, I just felt something slap me, somebody slapped me. I looked back, and it was Sharonda. It was just crazy, man, it was a crazy day. What is this? Hey, hold on, you! Hey. you better keep it. <laughs> Who is this bitch? Who the f is this little bitch? Who the f is this bitch? Who the f is this? 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 Who 
nothing serious. We never, you know, we were just friends. We just went out a couple of times, you know. We just had a good time. That's that's about it. I really actually never had no girlfriends, you know. I might lay my head down here, might lay it down over there. I was just, you know, I really, you know, I really never just had a girlfriend. I'm a single young man ready to mingle. So I have, you know, I have my rights to do what I want to do. At this moment, I don't mess with Dee Dee or Sharonda, you know. If I wanted them, I could have them, but I don't want now one of them, so, because my life is flowing right now. I don't need no negativity in my life, like right now, you know. Yeah, my, you know, my album's about to drop. You know, it's coming in stores September 25th. Yeah, featuring Gucci Man and Young Jeezy, you know. I got a lot of stuff flowing right now. Eve Cullen appears relieved to have washed her hands of the man she once hoped to call her husband. Eve plans to move on with her life and looks for someone who can appreciate a strong and confident woman. She continues to aspire one day to run for office and has her sights set on helping people. For his part, Brian Hill states that his relationship with Eve ended a long time ago. Hill is pleased to have all this out in the open and be free from the shackles Eve had him in for so long. Sylvia was uncooperative, but briefly spoke with Cheater's producers. She said, I am with an amazing man. Hey, please. Get out of my face! Oh my gosh! You are a cheater! Now you're a comedian! That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. The hard road to a happy marriage is something that Ryan Bradley believed he had conquered. His wife's recent vocation, however, may be warning signs that all is not well. Worried about what happens when he's not home, Ryan seeks answers from professional examiners. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Yeah, I was, you know, this kid who went to church every Sunday. Everything was always so black and white and perfect. And then you know, she came into the world, and there was real color there, something, something special. You know, we hit this point, and I don't know what what set it off, but it was like everything just kind of shut down. She lost her job and uh, she started getting depressed and a lot of dynamics of what we were trying to do together, you know, really changed. I had to pick up more work, you know, things were a lot tighter financially and stressful, it's extremely stressful. And the rare weekends that we got together, it was, hey, I'm gonna to get together with the girls. I don't want you in the house. This isn't, you know, this is something I wanna do on my own. I'm like, with our only free time, and every time we had free time, I mean, this, was, this wasn't this was just like a one isolated incident. It happened over and over and over again. And as much as I didn't wanna believe it, it was always more locks being put on that door in between us. And, you know, I'm done. I wanna, I wanna know what's going on and this is, my, this is my only option, I guess, I don't. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Marilyn, age 30. An unemployed wife suspected of financing her lifestyle through libidinous activity. Investigation day two. With critical intel provided by the client regarding his wife's daily schedule, Cheater's agents form a perimeter outside the residence they both share. A little after noon, field operatives notice conspicuous activity occurring in front of the home. An unknown male parks and exits his vehicle. 
He's carrying a bag with him. While still on the driveway, the man pulls out his wallet and appears to count money. Satisfied that all is in place, he continues to the front door. He knocks, and the suspect, Marilyn, answers the door, dressed quite provocatively. The male enters, and the door shuts tightly after him. Internal surveillance cameras placed earlier by Ryan come to life and capture Marilyn and her man getting comfortable in the living room. The unknown companion settles into an oversized chair while Marilyn puts on a show designed to titillate. Marilyn slowly strips off her clothing while the audience of one tucks money into her garter. Marilyn gets friendlier as the dance goes on, grinding into the lap of her patron. After an hour of gyrations, it appears that time is up. The gentleman caller slips the rest of his money to Marilyn and exits the home. Agents watch while he enters his car and departs. Investigation Day 3. With the events of the previous day fresh on their minds, Cheater's investigators are on high alert for additional developments. With no movement earlier in the day, agents take special notice of a Porsche parking in front of Ryan and Marilyn's home. An unknown male exits the car and heads for the front door. He knocks and is let in by Marilyn. Once inside, the man wastes no time in getting comfortable. He takes off his shirt and then his pants. The scene takes an odd turn after Marilyn's customer puts on a blindfold and is then ordered to get down on all fours. Marilyn controls him, making him crawl along the floor while she spanks him with a horsewhip. After some time on his hands and knees, Marilyn leads him to the couch. The man begins to worship her feet, caressing and kissing her stiletto-clad tootsies. As time expires on the apparent client's hour of domination, Marilyn cracks the whip and demands his departure. The befuddled bootlicker searches for his discarded clothes, and even before he can put them on, he is shown the door. Outside, perimeter units watch as Marilyn makes her client dress on the doorstep. After she slams the door, she hurriedly disassembles the stripper pole in preparation for her husband's return. Investigation Day 5. Agents on point are informed that Marilyn is having another pleasure party this evening. According to her husband, it's much like a Tupperware party, but involving devices for female stimulation. However, it's quite apparent that the ruse Marilyn has regularly employed is again in effect when another unknown male makes his way inside. As the man is led inside by Marilyn, the unknown female is at the ready by the dancer's pole. As the show begins, it is Ryan who is paying for it, as evidenced in this recorded phone call with Marilyn. After the exhaustive show, it appears that Marilyn and her friend need some time to wind down. They make their way into the bedroom and spend their final hours before Ryan's return under the covers. With an enormous amount of data proving Marilyn's deception, agents pull up stakes and return to the base to begin compiling their presentation for Ryan's review. Coming up, the confrontation. With proof of the suspect's deliberate indecency, Cheaters confirms Ryan's ill feelings. Driven by the desire for the low-down nitty-gritty, he prepares himself for the offensive facts. Well, Ryan, the reason that we are here this evening is for the fact that our detectives have compiled some information which I think it is imperative for you to see. Are you prepared to review that information now? Yeah, I am. Okay. Well, Ryan, you played a big part in our investigation 
because we had you place hidden cameras inside of your home. After you left for work on this particular day, a gentleman arrives at your home. He has a bag of articles with him. As he arrives, he stops to ensure that he has the correct currency. And inside, through that hidden camera, we notice that your wife is performing somewhat of a stage show for this gentleman. Now, at the close of this performance, they bid farewell. The transaction's complete. The gentleman leaves. Ryan, unfortunately, this day doesn't get any better. Our detectives observe a young lady as she arrives at your home. Not long after that, a gentleman arrives. Inside, both of these young ladies entertain the gentleman, but on this occasion, she engages in a menage with these two willing participants. The gentleman extricates himself from the proceedings, but the young ladies are not through, and they take their experience to another level. Oh my God. I don't want to belabor what we now know is taking place. Earlier tonight, what did your wife tell you? She asked me to um, leave the house for a while. She needed it to herself for one of her parties. We have strong suspicions that the same activity is taking place now. Do you want to continue and confront your wife with the information that you now have? Let's do it. Okay. All right. Come with me and we'll call the detectives from the car. Hey, you know what? We're headed in your direction right now. So the female from before and then two additional principals? All right, so now so we have a total of four. And we should be there shortly. All right. Sounds good. All right, there they are. Right everybody out, everybody out right now. Ready. Okay, we're ready. They're inside right now. All right, got your keys. I got my keys. All right. Let them through. Coming up, the conclusion. Okay, we're inside right now. What the f is this? What the f are you guys? Get the f out of my house! Where's your f wedding ring? What does this mean anything? Marilyn? Yeah, Marilyn? Marilyn? Hey, who the f are you? Get the f out of here! Who the f you? am I? I'm your f husband! That's who I f am! I Get care. out of my room! Get out of my f room! I don't Do it! So the whole point. Why do you think I fell in love with you in the first place? You're better than all of this. I love it though. It's so what? much fun. What is that? Is that the only thing that's important? I mean, I thought that we were in love. What? I you, do. do you have I enough for both of us? I mean, for God's sake. Fine. How are we fine? fine? Yeah. How are we fine? Wait, this is fine for you. <laughs> you're keeping your husband out of your bed. But yet it's open for everyone else. I don't... And if that's how you want to live your life, you know, I'm not going to make any judgments, but 
there's someone that's supporting you. This is a person who's been supporting you financially and emotionally. How is this so important to you? How, how can this be after everything? We had life, we were gonna have children, we talked about it, we I had know, a plan. Why is this suddenly what you had to have? It's just, it's really like Marilyn, at, at what point did you feel it necessary to exclude your husband in, in what I you- I couldn't let you know about You couldn't let me know, you could always come talk to me about things. I was, I was what was so important, I was, what was so perfect between us. Why, why? Why did you have to hide it from me? You could have talked about it. We could, we could have done something about it other than this. You know what? You know what? Now, get the f out here. Get her out. To keep her out. You have to deal with it. You know what? I'm so sick of you. Get out of my house. Get out. Get out. Oh, go ahead. Go. Yeah. Hear me. Go. No. Let's get the f out of here. Yes. No. no. Ryan, no. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I can't do it anymore. You just, just no, stay. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. Are there any parties at all? Or is that just a ruse? No, there there are early. Like, we're making money off of this. We're just Well the, yeah, I, I understand you might be making money, but are you or how are you making money? Well, we're just dancing. I don't really understand what is the problem is. This is ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Why? Why are you doing this to me? Just get away from me. Go! No. Get out! Get out now! Jesus Christ! Come on, come on. Okay, man. No, I'm not okay. Jesus. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's give him some room here. With the confrontation over, Ryan struggles to understand his wife's perspective. Later in the show, we'll update you on his progress. But first, Maria Hernandez returns to discuss confronting her boyfriend in front of his wife on Cheaters. Well, when I saw the footage, I was really upset and sad because, you know, I love the man, but I couldn't let him see me sad or upset. So as soon as I got there, I just wiped off my tears and all of that just turned into rage. comprehend how somebody can just lie to somebody like that you know I showed him everything about me I showed him my family I let him meet my family and he would never really let me meet any of his family just his mom but you know there's more than that to it and he just was living a double life I guess you know we've been following get in, get in. Get in the truck well, now you want her to get go with truck. you get in my truck You're I don't know you stupid nothing ho stupid well, ma'am, we know that you bring him lunch every Friday. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Back up. Watch out. Watch out, guys. Do this. Yeah. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Make it known. Now I'm just trying to live my life, you know. I'm just closing that chapter of my life and just trying to start over. But really, I'm not trying to get into any relationships because, you know, I fell into that one real fast, you know, six months, and we were talking about a lot of stuff. I loved them at, you know, such a short time, but I'm just trying to get over it and, you know, continue living my life.
Following the overwhelming confrontation, Ryan Bradley is at a loss as to how to move forward. He claims to still love his wife, but her lies and blatant disregard of their marriage vows leaves him seeking solace from a higher power. Ryan is currently living with his mother while waiting for his divine intervention. When contacted by Cheater's producers, Marilyn was quite forthcoming about her involvement with multiple men and women. She says, I love Ryan, but he knew when he married me that I have unusual desires. She claims that once she lost her job, she put an ad on an adult site and was only going to do it once. But after having a stranger give me money to just look at me, I was hooked. We needed money and I was making more in one day than I'd made in a week in retail. She hopes that one day Ryan will forgive her, but believes divorce is the only way they can both be happy. Marilyn's female companion was not... And this is Cheaters. So in the beginning, before the baby even was thought of or even came, it was like unicorns on acid for us. Like we were just so happy. We were all up in each other's face all the time. Just wanted to chill and hang out, drink a beer or two, you know, whatever. And then, I don't know, after, it was almost like the moment after I took the pregnancy test, everything just changed. Cameron, age 26. A furniture salesman accused of playing musical chairs with his girlfriend's love. Sometime near sundown, Cameron leaves work. The suspect walks around the strip mall to a coffee shop where he meets with an unidentified female. The suspect and his coffee date go inside and order a couple of cups of joe. Taking their drinks back outside, Cameron and his mysterious friend grab a table on the sidewalk. He started being distant. It was like he didn't talk to me about anything anymore. Not like the way he used to, which was weird to me because we were always the type of couple to where we could just tell each other everything. Sometimes I feel like he's not even, not only interested in me, but I kind of feel like he's not even interested in the child anymore. Just like, he doesn't do like the little things that he used to do for me, like, he doesn't rub my back, he doesn't make me ramen noodles like he used to, he doesn't take me to doctor's appointments as often as he used to. Like, he's just, his lack of interest, it just, it's gone way down. Cheater's operatives notice something amiss when Cameron leans in to kiss his otherwise innocent partner. The couple canoodles over their coffee for some time. After a while, the suspect leads his companion to his vehicle. Tailed by the cheater surveillance squad, Cameron drives across town, finally arriving at an unknown home. He escorts his femme fatale to her front door. Cameron joins the pretty woman inside. Much, much later, the suspect leaves and drives home to a disconcerted crystal. I'm definitely not prepared to move on with him if he's cheating but I would be lying if the thoughts in the back of my head still said that I didn't want to be with him just because you know true love doesn't go away overnight it takes months sometimes even years it doesn't just disappear or dissolve a relationship without trust is nothing because if you don't have trust you don't have communication, and if you don't have communication, it's like, what do you have? Cheater's investigators stake out the suspect in Crystal's home. This evening, Cameron takes his red hot rod for a spin. A cheater's mobile detachment trails closely as the suspect commutes to the home seen previously on surveillance. Promptly, the suspect's consort, now positively identified as Chelsea Hannigan, gets inside. The dynamic duo drive away, shadowed by the cheater's private eyes. Cameron and Hannigan arrive at a movie bar and grill, obviously intent upon catching a flick and some food. During their wait, Cameron proves Crystal's distrust by playfully caressing Hannigan's locks. A few hours later, the suspect and his date return to his ride. As would a true gentleman, he holds the passenger door open for his playmate. 
Crystal's boyfriend then drives his second girlfriend back to her residence. Deciding he has plenty of time to spare, Cameron joins Hannigan inside. Quite some time passes before the cheater's surveillance team sees Cameron again, slinking home to a heartbroken and pregnant girlfriend. As with previous days, cheaters' detectives continue their watch of Crystal and Cameron's residence. The suspect leaves and dashes to his clandestine flames residence. Hannigan gets into Cameron's vehicle. The suspect and his companion speed to a shopping center. Crossing the lot to an entrance, Cameron has his arm wrapped protectively around Hannigan. Inside the store, the couple shop in the home decor section. Eventually, the twosome return to their car with goods in hand. And the suspect returns his sultry charge back to her home. Just as cheaters' detectives expect, Cameron joins Hannigan inside for a number of hours. When the suspect finally leaves, the cheater squad heads back to headquarters to collate their case for a downtrodden crystal. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that all clues point to an affair, Cheaters gathers evidence for Crystal's scrutiny. With her heart threatening to break from the stress, Crystal steals herself to view the truth. First thing I'd like to say, Crystal, is thank you for coming out this evening. As you know, we have conducted our investigation. Mm -hmm. And my question for you is, are you prepared to see what we've come up with? Yeah, definitely. All right. Crystal, we begin our investigation outside of Cameron's workplace. A few moments later, we see Cameron emerge. And he walks to a coffee shop and meets up with this woman. They grab their coffee and they sit down. Tell me, do you recognize her? No. Continuing on, after getting their drinks, they sit on a table right outside the coffee shop mm -hmm. and begin to converse back and forth. Then he leans in and kisses her. After finishing up their coffee, they proceed to Cameron's vehicle mm -hmm get in together and leave the coffee shop. They arrive at this residence. That's when we see the car lights turn off. The female gets out of the vehicle, and so does Cameron. Some hours pass. We see Cameron leave. He gets into his vehicle, and he drives away. Continuing on our investigation, as our detectives follow Cameron, he arrives at that same home from the previous day, and that female emerges. She gets into the vehicle, and our detectives follow. They arrive at a movie bar and grill. They sit down and have a few drinks. They sit at this table together, and he begins to romantically play with her hair. After they finish their drinks, moments later, they exit the bar. He then escorts her to his vehicle and opens the door. After closing the door, he receives a phone call before he gets into his vehicle. Mm -hmm. What you're about to hear is the audio from that. Tell me if you remember this, Crystal. Okay. After finishing up that phone call saying he's playing poker with his boys while that woman's sitting in the car, mm -hmm. they return to her residence. That's when we see Cameron go inside wearing a t-shirt. And that's when a few hours pass and we see Cameron emerge in a completely different outfit. What? Yeah, he changed his clothes. At this point in time, why don't we go ahead and get in the vans? I know exactly where their location is. They're at that same residence. Oh, you do? Absolutely. Okay. So, why don't we get on the road? Yeah, we can, yeah, let's just, yeah, let's go ahead and do that then. Okay, right this way. Okay.
How you doing, miss? All right, how are you? Good, I'm Clark Gable. I'm with the television show Cheaters. Is Cameron here? Yeah, he here. That's my boyfriend. Well, I got his girlfriend out here who's pregnant with his child, nine months. His girlfriend? Hey, Cameron? Who? That's his girl. That's your girlfriend? Cameron, how you doing? Who's all these people? Whoa, so what the f is this? Hey, so what the f is this? Hey, so what is this? So what is this? Who is this? Who is this? What is this? What is this? What is this, though? What is this, though? What is this though? Let's get everyone. Get off my porch. Get off my porch. Go. Who is this? That's who he shares a home with. You live with her? What's your name? My name Chelsea. Chelsea. Just camera on my face. Why, why are you bringing all these people? What you mean? Who is all these people? Don't worry about the cameras, boo. What is this? What is this? No, don't touch me. Well, they've been together for a year. They live together. They share a home. Is that right? And that's his baby. That is his baby. Coming up next, the conclusion. So what the f is this? So what the f is this? That's who he shares a home yeah, with. And that's his baby. That is his baby. She's about a week out from having that child. Is that right? This your girlfriend? This your girlfriend? This your girlfriend? This your baby? This your baby? No, explain. You ain't gonna say. I'm Excuse me. Don't real good. People, That's though. your baby? So I would really like to see But you've been up in here laying up with me? Yeah. It is what it is. This bitch nine months pregnant? It is what it is. And you laying up is. in my house? Yes, Go Cameron, please tell, please tell me. Please tell me. No, no, come here. Come here. Who are you telling to watch out, though? Who are you telling? No, let go of me. Is cameras out in front of my mother's house, out in front of my face, you need to explain because I'm not going to No, don't worry about your child. Because you wasn't with your child. Don't worry about your child when you was up in there. When you were playing. It's nine months. And you laying up in my mother's house. I can't believe you. Why are you laying up in my mother's house? Why are you laying up in <laughs> Go on, you Man. can do that with your bitch. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So you just slipped and fell in her I accidentally? Leave. So you leaving with that bitch? All right. I mean, put it this way, what if what if you were standing next to me and you just walked in and saw your girl in that house with another man and she came out and you found out she was pregnant? You'd be pretty upset, I, I Cameron. You up, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be upset, exactly, And you think it's man. funny? I just did it, mother. Laundry. This bitch nine months pregnant. Excuse me. It ain't funny. You think it's funny? It's not funny. How about if I crack the top of your skull? Would that be funny? Yeah. How did you meet Chelsea? How did you meet that girl? Yeah, how did you meet her? She hit me up on Facebook, you know what I'm saying? She hit you up? Yeah. He's making her playing. That's his bitch. Chelsea, I would like to ask you a question right quick. So oh, y'all gonna leave together. So so no, so he's telling me that you hit him up. Mm -hmm. No, but you sitting up here saying that you that she hit you up, and I just got a feeling that that ain't what it is though. Stay with this bitch. You stay with this bitch. So I got a question. Watch out! Watch out! You st there you go. I didn't look in your There you go. Yeah, I think she's burning your clothes. She ain't burning my clothes. Baby, in, a in five minutes, bitch. Now get that bitch on, and we were spending money together. All right. There's bo we got boxers here, and I mean, I there's some, there's all sorts of stuff there. Hey, Chelsea, what exactly? That did, hit me up. did he tell you he was single? He or? told me he had a baby, but he didn't tell me this bitch was pregnant. He didn't even tell me he had a girlfriend. I'm supposed to be his girlfriend. Tell the truth. You, you ain't tell, tell the, the truth. truth. Say, this your bitch. Yeah, this that's your my bitch. bitch. All right. Chelsea, then get your, get your and leave with your bitch. You get this. Stop, drop, and roll. Hey, Chelsea, do you have a hose? Why don't you go ahead and get a good start on burning in hell? <laughs> you and your bitch can go on somewhere. You heard ask her anything? <gasps> Idiot! Hey, someone, hey, someone call an EMT. Is hey. that a bitch finna have her baby in front of my mother's house? Go on somewhere with that bitch. Go on. Can we get her, can we get her a chair? Hey, come sit over here. Come, come sit down. Hey, you have a chair in front of your house? Hey, that bitch ain't coming in front of my house with that You can go ahead and get baby down the street. You're not gonna give her a chair. Hell no, nah, I ain't. You're not you, gonna give no, her. Hell no, nah, I ain't. You can tell down. Here, here, here. Sit down, 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 sit down. Relax, relax, relax. You gonna help her? Breathe. Yeah, I'm gonna help her. What the f you mean? They're coming. Hey, they're coming. I hear him. I hear him. But you're a single man. Good. You. How about that? Breathe. Listen, I understand what you did. It was stupid. It was wrong, and you made a mistake. But listen. There's an ambulance right there that's about to take her to the hospital, and she's about to have your child. Right here, it didn't even have to happen, though. But it did have to happen, though. I would like it if you would go be with her, though. 
Oh, I'd rather be with you though. Cause you've been laying up here, over here with her. Listen to me. So I mean. Listen, listen, listen. I know you're upset, mm -hmm. but your water just broke and you're about to give birth. Okay. Hold on. Uh, we just had a water break. She's about uh, water nine months pregnant. Yeah. Nine months pregnant is your first baby. Mm-hmm. Your first one, okay. How far along are you? Uh, nine months. Nine months. Forty weeks. Forty weeks, okay. Mm -hmm. What was going on when this happened? Oh, well, my um, boyfriend, he's cheating. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. He's really, really good at sticking yeah. his in oh. other people. Oh, so, okay. you, got no you know, it's just, it's yeah, really good. No Do you like Relax. your job? Relax. 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 You like your job? Let's just worry I, about that I like my job, too. Yeah. You know? What's going on? We got a stretcher right here, okay? Well, I'm going to do the one to kind of help you stand up, okay? okay. And mm -hmm. then we're going to get you over to the stretcher right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to get you to sit down on that, okay? Go ahead and get that side for me, if you would. Go and stand up for him. There you go. All right. He ain't helping his bitch now. Take it easy. Take it easy. There you go. Yeah, it's your stuff. Just get up here, okay? Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, Where's your phone at and stuff? Where's your stuff? Is it in, in there? Up in the room, okay? My, my in the pocket. Van? In your pocket? You have all your stuff? Are you with no. Her? What, yeah, what else right. do you need out of there? In the okay. van? Is your purse in there? Like that, because it hurts. You like that? Is that comfortable for you? Okay. All right. You got it? Here got it. All right, This is her jacket. Hey, you're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. Here's all ready. Uh huh. Okay, you up, guys. Okay. After the chaos of the confrontation, Crystal knows she must make a tough decision. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her final choice. But now, please welcome Mandy. Mandy visits with Cheaters to tell her side on the afternoon she was caught with another woman's man. So we we're getting rehab for him, physical therapy for his car wreck. Um, and it was just a, <laughs> it was just supposed to be a normal activity, you know? Uh, I was just sitting there watching him um, do these little rowboat exercises, and uh, then all of a sudden, all these cameras come in. You know, like 50 people and this strange girl, and um, it just—it definitely caught me off guard. It was something that I never expected to ever happen. Who the f is this? What are you doing? Who are you, baby? Baby, who are you? Who the f are you? His girlfriend. What the f is this? <laughs> this is cheaters. Are you aware that this man has had a girlfriend for about three years? They live together? Wait. Oh my gosh. What is, what is all this? Can we taste it? Hey, what? All we're doing no. is just trying to get answers from you, man. Wade, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here, man? Wade, <laughs> who is this girl? I'm his girlfriend, who are you? Uh, finding out that I was the other woman was a little crazy. You know, I never thought that I would ever be put in that position. I always told myself I would never be the other woman, you know, and knowing that I was causing somebody to cheat on their significant other. You know, it's horrible. It's horrible for her, you know, even even so. Even though it was horrible for me, it was definitely horrible for her too to find out somebody is cheating on you. That that definitely put me in a really in a really weird place. Have you ever been inside of his residence? Inside of his no, he he stays with me all the time. So, doesn't that make you kind of question that why he wouldn't let you into his own residence if he had nothing to hide? I mean, I don't, I don't go to his house. He comes to my house. Like that's how it is. But you do park outside of his house. You don't go to his house. house. Now, have you ever wondered why? You did this to both of these girls. You lied to her, and I, you know, that's that's one thing. But this woman is pregnant with your child. Yeah, I know. So since this whole experience, um, the relationship has been amazing. You know, I feel like he's 100% committed to me and to our baby. Um, I feel like we're definitely moving forward into a very good direction for both of us. Um, I feel like, you know, we've moved in together. We um, are very public with our relationship as opposed to before. Um, you know, our friends and family know about everything. And uh, I feel like this is going really well for the both of us. And I really look forward to what the future holds. Following the tumultuous events of the confrontation, Crystal Ellis ponders kicking the suspect out of the house they share. However, Crystal acknowledges that she loves the suspect with all her heart. 
She says, I admit I don't quite trust him now, and he knows he's going to have to earn it back. But we're definitely trying to reconcile. The suspect, Cameron, cuts off all contact with his companion. Cheaters congratulates him on becoming a true father. The suspect's companion, Chelsea Hannigan, declares... I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. It's been 30 years, and he's just the kind of person that uh, any woman would want. He's always there. He's over-helpful. He's got a new job at uh, Lee's Catfish and Chicken Shack, and he's, he's changed. It's like it's, something's not right, but you don't know what it is. He's always tired, uh, but yet if you're always tired, you're retired. So why are you going to work? You know, it's like it's a whole different person. And, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> it's just hard, because I know it's something's not right. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. It's why I would just, I hope it's not true, but I know it's something going on. <laughs> I don't know what I do. I hope that it was maybe just a one-time thing. Did he realize he made a mistake? <laughs> but I don't know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Virgil, age 69. A restaurant cook accused of serving up extra helpings to another woman. Investigation day one. Receiving the case briefing, agents set up a perimeter around the suspect's job as a cook for a catfish and chicken joint. Operatives are not surprised that a number of people frequent the establishment. However, what does pique the agent's interests happens inside the restaurant as the suspect, Virgil, sits at a corner table with an unknown female. The couple chat as the companion chows down on a meal of chicken. A short time later, the suspect escorts his dinner date to her vehicle. She gives him a quick kiss on the lips before getting into her car. Virgil walks back into work and his companion drives off, ending the day's surveillance. Investigation day four. After a few days of no progress on the case, agents catch a break when suspect Virgil walks out to the parking lot and meets with a female from previous surveillance whose identity is withheld. Greeting each other with a kiss and a hug, the two stroll, hand in hand, to a dimly lit area on the back side of the building. The pair get lost in the darkness, and about 20 minutes later, re-emerge. The suspect's duplicity is clear in this recorded phone call. Yeah, what is it this time? I was just trying to find out uh, what was going on that was all like that. You still busy? Yeah, I'm busy, and uh, I'll call you when I get to break. What time are you getting off? Before I get out of here tonight. Midnight? Yeah, midnight. Four hours? You know what? I'll just catch a, I'll catch a taxi one and I'll be home. I'll meet you at the house. Bye. I'm, I'm very upset. I love you. Bye. 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 Sometime later, the suspect walks his companion back to her vehicle with operatives noting the passion of the lovers as they kiss goodbye. The companion gets back into her car and drives off while Virgil returns to work. Investigation day five. For a second day in a row, the suspect recycles his excuse of having to work late. Unbeknownst to him, however, Ariel has professional eyes glued to his every move. Mobile units spot the suspect Virgil, close the restaurant, and then wait. A short time later, Virgil's companion from previous surveillance shows up. They greet each other with a passion born of elderly puppy love. Virgil and his unknown companion get into their separate vehicles, and they're followed to a super center where they park in an obscure area. Once both cars are settled, Virgil helps his lady climb into the back seat of his van. Approximately an hour later, the companion opens the van door in order to put her boots on. She adjusts her hair as Virgil cleans up any evidence in his family van. 
Hand in hand, Virgil escorts his girl back to her car. They make out by her car for a short while before the companion gets into the vehicle. Virgil leans in for a last kiss goodbye before shutting the door. He goes to his van and she drives off. And as Virgil drives back home to his faithful wife, Cheater's operatives head back to headquarters to prepare the report for Ariel's review. Coming up, the confrontation. With a dossier full of evidence, Ariel is contacted to view the findings. Fearing the worst, she pulls herself together before facing the truth. Ariel, my name's Clark Gable, I'm with Cheaters. I just wanna say thank you for coming out here today. So I understand you're in a 30-year marriage with your husband, Virgil. Yes. We conducted our investigation and came up with some very interesting findings. Are you ready to see those? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Great. We conducted surveillance outside of Virgil's workplace. This unknown vehicle pulls up, that blonde female emerges, and that's when our detectives get this shot of them inside, sitting together, having a meal. Do you recognize that woman? No. Okay, well, a short time after, Virgil escorts her to the outside of the restaurant. He opens the door for her, exchanges a few words. She gives him a kiss. He and doesn't even walk he returns better. He to don't work. walk like that. And unknown female leaves. On this day, Virgil comes out of the restaurant, seen outside holding a bag of food on his cell phone. That same female pulls up in her vehicle. They both get into their vehicles. We see them leaving together. They then follow each other across the street to a super shopping center, park next to each other in the back. That's when we have Virgil here cleaning out his van. Back seat, closes the front door, shuts the side door, gets in on the other side with her. And what is she, a hooker? We're gonna find that out really soon. Some time passes. That's when we see her zipping up her boots. Mm, in my car. It doesn't make sense. I had no idea. Well, right now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna give our detectives a call. I'm gonna get their exact location. We have eyes on them right now. And we're gonna go confront them. Are you ready to do that? Yes, I'm ready to confront him. All right, Let me go ahead and call him right now. Mm -hmm. Master. Hey, Detective Gomez. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put you on speaker. All right, Detective, go ahead. She actually arrived here at the rest of 15 minutes ago. And she's on his break right now. They're both eating. <sighs> okay. All right, copy that. Thank you so much, Detective Gomez, and I will see you shortly. Sounds good. Let's go. What the hell going on? What are you doing up here? No, what is, what are you doing? No, you're supposed to be working. I am working. No, who is this? It's a friend of mine. Do you know he's married? I have no idea he's married. Where is your freaking ring at? I, I got wearing, mine on. I ain't been wearing my ring and you know it, because my fingers swell. You it ain't got that? to do with your fingers swelling. You know my fingers swell. What is going on? We got 30 years in No. Yeah, what is no. going on? I've been seeing on the tape. I saw you. Listen, bitch, what, what is going on? I saw you with my what? husband. Doing what? what? Doing and that. then you sit here, you eating my damn food too? She ain't eating your food. Hey, yeah, Virgil, this is I my food. This is Virgil, Virgil. Yeah. Virgil. Oh, you're a I cheap date, that. right? Virgil. You're a cheap date. Hey, look. That's how come he had to bring Eric. you to his job, because Virgil. he Eric. can't afford to take you nowhere Virgil. else. Virgil, you mean what? to tell me that this isn't you? This isn't you, miss? This isn't what? you? What? Like, your friends kiss? Yeah, yeah friends y'all kiss. No, you don't. Friends make I up. I kiss all my friends. We got five kids. But look, and I have no idea. You're wrong. Why you do this? Don't come to my job like this. Why did you don't do this? Don't come to my job like this. No, look, Why would you, you say wrong. not come to your job like this you when wrong. you let her come we to your job? We got 30 years. 
And guess what? And what? And what? I can't have friends. I'm not a female. Why don't I know I've about it? I've been having I've never friends. seen her at the house. There's a difference that's between friends and friends with benefits, man. That's your picture that's, that's on his phone. That's because I didn't invite her to the house. Yes, it is. He's a... I, we've been going out. What oh, so you sleep with all your friends? No. Get your hands off of me. Hey, so, hey, listen, Ben. You mean to tell me that when no, you guys were in this you van bitch. together, wait, you did wait, nothing? You know Hold on. Hold on. You look like trash oh. to me. When you get in the back of a married man's van, he can't even take you to a hotel. This is not the place for this. He can't even take you to a hotel. Wait, oh, so you tell me, Virgil, if this isn't the place for this, this is this the place for you to hook up with her? Why are you bringing her here then? Because she can come sit down. You know, when, when I, I call you and I like want to know about the case and stuff, oh no, you come for everything hey, is hey, fine. Hey, hey, hey. Now I know why hey, you don't you know know have no hey, idea. Hey, hey, you know what? I had no idea. You're fine, but you didn't take it outside. How would I know? You? How you know? You asked the man. That's how you know. No, you don't ask a man. You look at it. Finger. And I ain't oh, wearing this. Well, you, you need to, you need to start outside. asking instead of acting like a tramp. Take it outside, Don't please. call me a tramp, bitch. Oh, you call me a bitch and you call me a tramp? Coming up next, the conclusion. What the hell going on? What are you doing up here? Do you know he's married? How would I know? You need to start asking instead of acting like a tramp. How you go? How you go? Call me a bitch. We can talk about this. There's nothing going on between me and her other than friendship. This looks like something going That's on. In that van. In the back of my van. There was nothing. Oh. Back there, and y'all been laying up back there. That's there was nasty. Nothing going. On. So why, so why are you in the back seat of the van with her? Because I chose to married. sit in the back seat because okay, and she gets no out idea. doing her clothes and stuff. I had yeah, no Virgil, why would she be putting idea. her boots on and like zipping them up out of your van? Look, how many? You know, we how many we've been we... together too many years. For okay, this. do you trust me or not? It's not do a matter you... of trust. Yes, it's it what is. The pictures it's a matter. Me. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a matter of trust. No. Do you trust so me? So you are still married? Yes. To... Okay. I thought you said she died 20 years ago. I, didn't I say am she not dead at all. I said, Obviously. I said we haven't been together. No, you said she was dead. Regardless of the you fact you're married to this woman, you cheated with this woman, you lied to her and to her. So what oh, do you have to say for God, yourself? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. So okay. if you weren't doing nothing, why does that look hey. like on there that you're doing something? Virgil, you say you want her to trust you. What is your definition of trust in this relationship? In your 30-year marriage that just got a speed bump in it because you decided to cheat with this woman right here, it what is your definition really of trust? Cheating. It what was, was it? Just friendship. What was it? You know what I'm you saying? You can't talk it to me on the phone. Friendship? You working late? I, then why did you send me flowers and a card? I flowers. Flowers. Car. Flowers. Friendship to me is like going out and getting groceries together, not going Flow and getting in your yeah, own van. I ain't had flowers since I was a teenager from it. You been able to afford flowers? God. How you able to afford flowers? You're freaking. Hey, I can't even get, get to story, work. What's your name? Because this is who you with. I'm his wife. This stuff is ending right now. Oh my God. You want to see it? Look at the tape. Hey, I oh, saw it. The eyes don't lie. Oh, what surveillance? Yeah, let me see it. Give me the iPad, please. I, mean, I want to wear the flowers up. Oh, please. So you were tell me that you court. zipping up your boots right there. First, he lets you in on one side. Then he gets in on the other side. You guys are in there for at least 30 oh, can minutes. Oh, open up the other door. So That's pictures, all. so you guys were looking at pictures for 30 minutes. And then you had to, what did you get a the picture lost why, in your boot when it's on a cell phone? I came out this side is because I forgot I had a child proof lock on the other door. That's and fine, but what did you do for 30 minutes no. sitting inside no. of your van? No. Talking. No. no. Talking? No, no. Like I said. Okay, I'm gonna Oh, so you're you. just friendly to any man coming So along. you've been cheated on because you had no idea he was married. You're not I even with no this idea man. I he was married. I'm gonna go show you. I'm gonna get the card and the flowers. All right, you go get your card and your flowers. So please tell me a little bit about what's going on, Virgil. You have this woman that you bring into your van because you give her free stuff from she, your restaurant. She was coming to the restaurant. We struck up a conversation. I liked her attitude. So I'm So what is it about her attitude her. that you that you like hers There's better than mine? wrong with your attitude, but I can't say? talk to you the way you I talk picture? to her. Oh, to my vanilla honey. This. My vanilla honey. Like oh, you sent her this? Like and a picture? Chocolate bunny. You call that a friend? That looks like a vanilla honey. Vanilla honey, right? This is my damn flower. God, I can't believe you. Right. So now you're going to leave for this? A one night quickie? Uh, please. It's up to you. No, it's oh, up please. to you. No, it's up to you. Because you're the one you with caught. I wasn't caught. Whatever you decide to do, we do. You I'll freaking see out. If no. Hey, don't get freaking out.
What do you want to do? I can't believe you. I'm sorry. Turn that off. Yeah. What? I'm I mean, sorry, you guys. You got me in the midst of this. Get my reins. Let me out of here. I don't need this. Do you need this? No. If that makes you happy. That's your wife of 30 years. I would hope that would make her happy, man. makes you happy. Yes, okay. that's what makes me happy. All right, we'll you being at home is this, what makes me this happy. This was not the place to do this. Where else was it? This is where y'all at? This was not the place to do this. It don't not happen. on my job. This is where y'all at? Okay. Freaking ass. You ready? Yes. Let's All right, let's go. get out of here. Let's That's go. for you. Let's go. Let's go. And uh, we'll see you soon, let's man. Go. It just, right, it let's just don't make let's sense. go. Watch your backs. Let me see you again. Let me see you again. Whoa. <laughs> get that camera out my face, please. Get the camera out my face. Following the confrontation, Ariel is deeply distraught by the actions of her husband. Stay tuned as we reveal on how she's recovering. But now, Brandon Gosling comes back in to explain himself concerning the day he was caught gallivanting with a pregnant girlfriend by his own wife as cheaters cameras rolled. We was leaned up against a four-wheeler because we had a little bit of downtime finally. And next thing you know, I see out of the corner of my eye a bright light that you're not used to seeing with amongst all the horses and cows. And next thing I know, there's cameras shoved in my face. And then I look over at Cassie, I'm like, oh my God, this is just blown up. Oh my. Who are you? Oh. Who are you? Who are you? What in the world? I'm his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Bring this here. Yeah. Well, Brandon, what, were you gonna say anything to her? Eventually, where, where would it, ha where would it have here. to happen? Not here. It wasn't going to happen here, but not, not like this. Well, how? I mean, it's not like you didn't have it'd enough been, time. It would have been something totally different than this right now. You have a child. Yeah, I do. Right? I There's do. nine months there. Yeah. How long is, is this relationship going on? A couple months. Me and Cassie have had conversations on the phone. Uh, probably more times within me and Thelma. Uh, that's something that I probably would like to consider. She's hurt still and it's going to take a lot of me to make it up to her but i think that would actually be the easier road you're not the same person who are you you know i don't need any of this really i don't no but but no. you brought you made this I happen understand I you brought this upon yourself so for you to run out now and i'll take care of it's kind of cowardly go. that's fine i'll take care of it as it go you figuring out as you go along this isn't really going to help them any and that's a big responsibility. It is, but I'll take care of it as I go. Unfortunately, the, the reason that we're here is because these. your wife loves you. Look at these. Take them and look at them. I know. I've seen these pictures. You destroyed his life now. No, I haven't. I probably handled the situation the best I knew I could handle. You know, I tried to talk for a little bit, and there was no reason with either Cassie or Thelma. So the best thing for me to do is concentrate and, uh, mainly on myself right now try to make myself a little bit better of a person, but honestly, don't see a lot of things wrong with me. Following the emotional confrontation, Ariel Garrison admits she is contemplating divorce. She knows that any reconciliation will have to be earned by her husband. When asked if she has any vengeance in her heart, Ariel admits that she's still angry at her husband and is considering, maybe I'll go out and find a young man who wants to help me teach my husband a lesson. For his part in the affair, Virgil admits that he jeopardized his marriage. He says he'll do now whatever his wife wants. The suspect's companion, deeper and more foreboding, is intruding into his happy-go-lucky relationship. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. So we've been together for about two years now, and, you know, it's just been the best relationship I've ever been in. You know, we get along, compatible, but lately, something's just been kind of off. I just get a really bad feeling about it. She says she's starting to work more hours, so, you know, we can have a little extra money so we can be a little, so we can be comfortable. 
And you know, I'm not saying the money on her part. She's always saying, hey, you know, I'm broke, I don't have money. She's, you know, getting prettied up more than usual and you know, going out and you know, I usually expect her to do that with me. And here in the last week, I kind of, I caught her in a lie. She told me she was gonna go out with her, uh, her friend at the mall to go get some new clothes and stuff. You know, I ended up getting home a little later than usual and, you know, expecting her to be back. And uh, I walked in and the phone rang and it was her friend calling to see where she was at. And I told her I thought she was with you. I've, I really love this girl more than anything else in the world. And just to think if she was cheating on me, it just, it would destroy me. But at the same time, I just wish she would, you know, be up front with me and respect me for that, because, I mean, I've always been up front with her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Kendi Tripper, age 21, a cosmetology student suspected of using her makeup skills to make out with another man. Investigation day one. Using information provided by Justin, Cheater's operatives catch up with the suspect as she leaves her school. Tailed by agents to a downtown area, the suspect, Kendi Tripper, gets out of her vehicle attired in workout clothing. Tripper finally comes to a courtyard area and looking around spots the person with whom she's meeting. The unknown male greets her and is pulled into a juicy hug. Discarding her pink top, the suspect shows off her martial arts skills by grabbing her trainer and using a hip toss, throwing the young man to the ground. Horseplay aside, the unknown male instructs his student on the finer points of stretching with her trainer pushing her into a proper pose, Tripper takes the reins and pulls him into a kiss. Some moments later, they break apart, grab their clothing, and she leaves and returns home for the remainder of the evening. Investigation day four. Wondering about the suspect's true intentions, perimeter units inform their mobile counterparts of Tripper's departure from home. Tripper arrives at a remote building known to house a gymnasium. The suspect enters the building and is greeted by the sight of several male gymnasts working out. Shortly, the unknown male from previous surveillance, now positively identified as Juan Gonzalez, steps into a back room and is joined by suspect Tripper. She casually flips off the light and grabs Gonzalez in a hearty embrace. They make out for a few minutes before Gonzalez breaks away and leaves the darkened room. Investigation day five. Mobile units follow suspect Tripper as she drives to a bar where she again meets with her companion, Mr. Gonzalez. She enthusiastically greets him with a squeeze to his posterior before entering the establishment. However, nothing compares to her deceit in this recorded phone call. Hello. Hey baby, how's it going? Hey, honey, I'm good. What are you up to? Uh, nothing, I heard you were gonna be a How do you hear that I was at the uh, my little brother told me. I'm um, yeah. actually, I think I'm about to leave. I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm actually, I'm pulling up right now. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'm parking in the parking lot. Oh, that's, that's sweet of you. I'm actually up on the back patio. I'm reading my book. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I'll be up in, uh, in two seconds, all right? Oh, all right, honey. Well, I love you. Okay, love you too. Bye. 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 With more than enough evidence, Cheater's operatives return to headquarters to compile Justin's dossier. Coming up, The Confrontation. With sufficient evidence of an ongoing affair, Justin is brought proof of his concerns. Fearing for his relationship, he prepares to observe his girlfriend's hidden agenda. How you doing tonight, D'Angelo? I'm doing good. I just want to say thanks for coming out, man. I know you're really busy with work and stuff lately. Well, listen, we conducted our investigation. Came up with some very interesting findings. Are you ready to see that? Yes. All right. On this day of investigation, we follow Kendi, and she arrives at the downtown Water Garden Park. Gets out of her car and starts jogging. Then she briefly stops for a moment, 
she's looking for somebody. That's when we see this gentleman come up and give her a hug. You recognize him? My best friend. Is that Juan? That's Juan. Tell me briefly about him. Continuing on, Juan walks with Kendi. They go out to the field. That's when she takes her jacket off. Uh, they start wrestling, being a little playful. Now this is when things get interesting. I don't really know too much about parkour, but it looks like Juan's doing a little bit extensive with the stretching. Kendi runs over, gets her clothes. That's when we have Juan meet up with a couple people. Do you recognize any of these gentlemen? Those are all our friends. So Kendi puts her jacket back on and exits. Now on this day of investigation, we are outside of the bar. That's when we see Kendi outside, Juan walks up, she gives him a good squeeze on the cheeks, and they walk in together hand in hand. He opens the door for her, and that's when we have them out back kissing. I can't believe this. He has a book on the table, and then she gets a phone call, and everything stops. You can see Juan's face, he looks like he's clueless. She's hurrying to get off the phone. That's when he jumps over the fence, takes off, it's just... You see it, now you believe it. I'm gonna call my detective, and I'm gonna see if there's been any movement on their location. And we're gonna go from there, all right? Okay. All right. All right, go ahead. All right, so they ended up going with their friends to this zombie park. Uh, they've done the zombie park. Now they're congregating in a park on the corner of Rock Morton and Ninth. You guys get here soon enough, we'll get them right here. All right, copy that. We're about one minute out. I'll see you soon. All right, see you in a second. Right, thanks, bye. I have I have video surveillance of you kissing no. him at the gym. I have it all. No. Cheating on her, you ass. Juan told me that D'Angelo was cheating on me the entire time the past three months that we've been going out. And that's not true. What are you talking about? Yes, it is. No, it it's isn't. Totally I have a whole investigation. That's been friends for six years. How could you do that? He's been leaving me for some other girl named Jessica or something There's like no that. There's no other girl. I checked and did an investigation on the whole. There's no other girl. Yes, there is. This is freaking ridiculous. What's going on? What are you guys doing? What the f are you doing? No, you. What the f are you doing with him? No. You leave me for every day. All the time you go out and work. Provide. No. Provide for no. you. One, just tell me what's been going on with this with with this girl, Cindy. Has she told you that she's had a boyfriend for two years? For two years, man. You've loved her for over two years. You've been cheating on me. You've been cheating on me. I haven't done. Jessica. I haven't done. You have. No. You knew I cared about her. You knew you cared about her. You took her anyway. Coming up, the conclusion. But that's past the point, man. That's your best friend. You've known him for six years. He's been with other women. That's not true, though. I checked into that. You're someone else. Yeah, get him. Get him. So, Kenny, you have nothing to say? You have nothing to say. You're just going to stand there and let two best friends fight over you. Oh, my God. Two best friends. They've known each other for six years. I care about both of them. I don't know. And look at them. They're kicking the out of each other because you cheated on him. What the f are you in this? Don't f 
push me because you did something wrong. You Bro, cheated. You, you get cheated. Out of this. Stay out of this, damn it. You did this to yourself because you're a cheater. PJ. PJ. That's the you are. Why are you doing this stuff? Why are you doing this? You cheated huh? on him and no. you're lying. No, what the f are you doing? No, this is Is this really worth it, man? You're a little piece of whore. <laughs> are you happy what you've done to two best friends? Shut up. Why are you? Because you cheated hey, on your hey, boyfriend. Hey, I slept with her. I slept with her too. Oh my God. Oh, no, so now there's actually more people. No, there's actually more people. Are you sure about that? No, I never. You sure about that? Yes, I swear. Is there anyone else that has not slept with her? Oh, I've been as good as you. I've checked you into all. You've been as good as you. Oh my God, you've been gone. Oh, that's because he works his ass off so for he can you. provide for you. What are for you doing for? I'm Don't making this happen. I'm doing my job. This is so stupid. I cannot do this to me. Oh, I cannot stand this. How could you honestly let this happen? These are two best friends and you started this whole situation. Because you lied and because you cheated. Have you said what you wanted there? Have you gotten your I answers? Need I don't need this. So she has no explanation for you at all. Please stop. Why is all of this going on? Because he cheated on him with his best friend. I didn't cheat. He's been leaving me for 16 hour days. And so he's been, what? Oh my god, he's been cheating on me with this girl named Jessica. That's exactly what you told no, me. No, he Why hasn't. Would you tell he's me this lying to you. Come on! No! Stop! Stop! No! You've been lying to me! You've been telling me that D'Angelo has been sleeping with some other girl and I saw him! That's bull! He's been your best friend for six years! You don't let some whore drop our friendship! So who am I supposed to believe now? Who am I supposed to believe? No! Stop! Please, please, whoa. leave me the f no. <laughs> He's been your best friend for six years. Obviously, not. Hey, listen, man. You, you two, you, you owe him an explanation. One, one. You at least owe your best friend something, an answer, an explanation, something, man. You didn't come all the way out here to embarrass these people on camera for no reason. Get the f away. No. I don't want. You. I don't want you. My Life. Give them a second. Hey, give them a second. Give them a second to talk. As best friends, give them a second. Talk to me, at least as a friend. Dude, I know I, I know it's a lot right now, but just come on, man. Listen to me. I got one right here, dude. If you need to ask him or get answers, just why. That's all he wants to know is why. Why, why? Why would you go by my girlfriend? D'Angelo, where have you been? What the f I've been working for ever. Working these long hour days to buy a vacation ring. Ball! Ball! No! What the f***, Ball? You knew that I loved her. Angelo, please You're supposed to be my best friend. You ain't worth it. I didn't it. know. I didn't know. He told oh. me you were cheating on me. And I, that's why you were gone for so long all the time. And I didn't know what to do. Following the confrontation, Justin is devastated to lose both his girlfriend and best friend in the same night. At the end of the show, we'll detail you on his residual feelings. But next, Cheaters visits with Corinne Matthews, a former complacent party from the Rita Stout case. Miss Matthews comes forward to express her thoughts on being caught with Rita's boyfriend while doing her best to stay afloat on Cheaters. We had been dating about two or three months. 
it was I thought it was starting to get serious or whatever. He was telling me he wanted to see me more, maybe possibly get our own place together in the apartment because we weren't staying together at the time. Well, we saw Marguerite coming up and we was kind of confused because she was nine months pregnant. And they came out to the boat and asked us a bunch of questions and she wanted to know what was going on with us and how long we had been talking and why we was out there and stuff like that. Rita, what you doing out here? Nah, what you doing out here? You out here rolling the damn boat? This what y'all got going? No, yeah, a friend of mine. How she become a friend of yours too? Oh, we just, you know, I called the phone and he answered the phone. You been acting all crazy lately. What you mean crazy? Ever since you got pregnant with a baby. That's what I do. That's what I do. Is this crazy, George? Yeah, it's very crazy. So we imagine this. Why you call all these people out here? I had to let him go. The same day we was going out on our dates when he was telling me we was going to move in together, um, the producer showed me the tape of him in the store. When I was actually outside in the car, he was talking to some females in the store. So no, thank you. I don't want him anymore. I ain't wearing a beard. Now I know you are. Y'all belong together. Y'all belong together. Okay, well, I promise bye. you. I okay, promise well, you y'all belong together. Okay, bye. I promise you y'all belong together. Bye. Get her. 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 No more cameras watching me, never know who's out looking. So. so I would like to apologize to her, and I would like her to understand that everybody makes mistakes, and maybe we can patch things up one day, and I can show her how a true friendship was supposed to be since we were friends for all that time anyway. One incident shouldn't break it up. Filled with waves of humiliation, punctuated by fury at both his fiance and his best friend, Justin D'Angelo forges his way through heartache. Justin focuses now on his training, giving his anger opportunities to dissipate. I don't even want to think about her ever, he says, and I don't want to think about him right now. Claiming that she didn't want to hurt Justin, Kendi Tripper felt that she was torn between two men. When questioned about the relationship, she admits, and now, I think I've lost both of them. When contacted by Cheaters producers, Juan Gonzalez freely admits that he hurt his friend. He said, I should have seen what I was doing. I know that because of me, Justin suffered immensely. Kendi was just so exciting. I've never had a woman show me so much attention, but I have to mend my friendship. Get out of my face! Oh my gosh! You are a cheater! Now you're a comedian! That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. An overworked student desperate for the truth about her boyfriend's charitable occupation, Kelly Carter seeks a reprieve from her anxiety. Needing clarification before moving towards marriage, Kelly seeks answers from experts in extruding the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. I caught him before cheating, but he promised before we moved together that he wouldn't do it again. And I took his word for it. He promised me a wedding ring, and I haven't seen one yet. But I'm starting to feel like I made a mistake. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like he's doing something, and it's not a good feeling. I don't have any security. And it's always obvious when him, you know, when he had something going on. And Thursdays, I've noticed that he's working later hours. His phone is always locked. His ringer is always off on his phone. And I've even seen girls in his inbox on Facebook. I even looked at his phone one night and I saw some unknown calls late at night. And I asked him what were those calls about. And he's, oh, I don't know who that was. Maybe someone used my phone at the job calls like 16 and 20 minutes long. We don't talk much anymore like we used to. We don't cuddle much like we used to. And a lot of that stuff is affecting our relationship and it's making me think more and more every day and it's eating me up, making me think that he's with another woman. It's been nights and times that I've set up and I've actually cried myself to sleep. 
when he would say he's at work and I just feel in my heart that he's not. I really hate that I have to go through this over again. And I was really believing that he changed. There's no more chances after this. I forgave him the first time. After this, it's, I can't do it no more. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Courtney, age 30, an administrator accused of using his charitable inclination to find amorous endeavors. Investigation Day 3. With little to go on regarding the subject's after-hour activities, Cheaters agents place a border team around the suspect's place of business. Agents on duty eventually spot the subject, identified only as Courtney, exiting the homeless shelter for which he is an administrator, and entering his car. Mobile units follow the suspect until he pulls over on a secluded side street. Agents notice an unknown female walking toward the car as Courtney steps out of his vehicle. The two embrace by the car before entering the heated interior. Despite the fact that the car is running, Courtney makes no attempt to engage the automatic transmission. Curious as to the events taking place inside the cab, agents zoom in in hopes of identifying any sort of movement. The taillights curtail the hoped-for clear picture of the duo inside. Fifteen minutes pass before the two emerge and share a tender embrace. Courtney, being the gentleman, escorts his lady to her car and sees her off. Then he returns to his car and heads home for the evening. Investigation Day 5. Cheaters field operatives outside the suspect's place of employment spot Courtney exiting in his car. Mobile units track the suspect to a nearby market. Courtney steps out of his vehicle while chatting on his cell phone. As he paces the parking lot, another car arrives and takes the space next to his. Courtney hurries over to the driver's side as Cheater's client, Kelly Carter, slides out of her car and into the arms of her altruistic boyfriend. The couple walk hand in hand across the parking lot to a nursery. Courtney buys Kelly a small bouquet of flowers before returning to the homeless shelter. It appears that Kelly gave Courtney a bright idea Upon leaving work for the evening, the suspect meets his companion from previous surveillance, now identified as Tasha, at the very same nursery he met Kelly. It appears that flowers are not the only thing blooming. Courtney buys his consort a large bouquet of roses, eclipsing the ones bought earlier for Kelly. Delighted by her man's thoughtfulness, Tasha returns with Courtney to their cars. Before departing, the two share a long and loving kiss. The couple finally break away from one another and go their separate ways for the rest of the evening. Investigation Day 7. As all the pieces start falling into place, Cheater's agents remain outside of the suspect's place of employment. At the end of the shift, Courtney leaves in his car and is followed to the same location that began this investigation. He picks up Tasha, who is patiently waiting for him on the side of the road, and they are followed to a nearby eatery. Although Courtney is quite flowery with his new romance, it is Kelly who has fed the fertilizer, as indicated in this recorded phone call. With confident confirmation of the suspect's improprieties, Cheaters prepares their report for a disheartened Kelly. Coming up, the confrontation. With her boyfriend's immoral donations confirmed, Cheaters contacts Kelly to divulge the report. Steadfast and purposeful, Kelly prepares to face the deplorable truth. 
Kelly, we contacted you this evening because you charged us with a task, and that was to see if you can find out what's going on behind my back. Yes. And our detectives have information that they felt was very important for you to see. Are you ready to look at it? Yeah, I need to see it. On this particular day, our investigation started outside of Courtney's place of employment. Courtney leaves the office, gets in his car, and parks on the side street. It's not too long, Kelly, before a woman pulls up in her car. They greet each other, and they both get into your boyfriend's car. They remain there for an extended period of time before she gets out. We see them entwined and exchanging a kiss before he accompanies her back into her vehicle. He gets into his car and he leaves for the evening. On this afternoon, we again pick up Courtney as he leaves the shelter. He was followed to another place that sold plants and flowers. He gets there, and the same woman that we've seen him with previously also met him there. We see him taking a deep breath of her essence. Mm. You're a damn liar. They make a purchase, walk back to the car. They spend another few moments in one another's embrace before they get back into their respective vehicles and go their separate ways. We have detectives that are on location right now. I'm going to check with them and see if they can give me an update. Gomez, you have anything on your end? He left for lunch and he met the same young lady. It's 600 South Harwood, right at that block. Okay, we'll head to that location right now. And then we'll, we'll look for you. Sounds good. Okay, bye. Watch your step. Watch your car. Watch, Watch your car. for the car. Keep moving. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Cut. Get up there. Go. What the f you doing? What the f you doing? What the f you doing? Who are you? Oh, bitch, who are you? Who are you? Bitch, who are you? Bitch, who are you? Nah, she ain't enough. Don't f*** this hoe. Who are you? Bitch, you better get back, hoe. Oh, you better get oh. back, hoe. Coming up next, the conclusion. What the f*** you doing? Who the f*** is this? Oh, bitch, who are you? Who are you? Bitch, who are you? Who the f*** is this? I was f***ing with. Yeah. This is what you want to do? Is this what you want to do? Huh? Let me just talk to you. What you mean? Talk to who? What you mean? Talk to who? Nah, get back. What you mean? Talk to who? Did you know about me? Hell no, I ain't know about you. I get about you. What you mean? Stay with your ass for four years, huh? You better be with her. This is what you better do. This is what you better do. What you gonna do, huh? What you gonna do? You better get this, huh? What you gonna do? What? Kelly, Kelly, no, no. Get this, huh? This is Bring your ass here, huh? Is he running? Yeah, he runs. Oh, great. All right. This bitch got me up. I don't know, man. Come on, man. Y'all too. Why your ass? Why are you running? Say, just chill, man. No. How long have you been going on? Man, let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. What you think it is? I'm just trying to call it out from her. From her? Yes. I'm okay. Trying, I'm trying to call it out. You ain't trying to do. I'm trying to call it out, baby. Don't do me like that. You Why the you ain't at work? You embarrass me in front of the So you been her? Can we talk without the cameras? No. Should I have talk without no. the cameras? Who is this? Can we talk without the cameras? No, we cannot. Can we talk now? I gotta do all this just to get you to talk? You working every day. You don't even get my attention now. I ask you every night when you come home. You be sleep, sleepy. You so. Sleepy. Come on, man. I cook his meals. You don't cook his meals. 
come to me every night. He come home to me every night, bitch. After he you, yeah, he come home to me, baby. I'm his man, bitch. I'm his man, bitch. You testing me, bitch. You testing me, bitch. I'm his man, bitch. You testing me, bitch. You testing me, bitch. You ain't nobody home. You ain't nobody. You a fool. A Facebook bitch. That's who you is, ho. He just say he trying to call life with you, ho. So you gonna come get huh? the my house, huh? And go say with this hang it up. Come talk about it. Come talk about it. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it. It don't matter, ho. It don't matter, bitch. It don't matter. Guess we come home every night. Where you come every night? What you better do? Watch out. Hutch, over here. Tell me now what you better do. You don't know what? You don't know. You don't know what? I'm embarrassed, my you don't know what. You don't know what. Bitch, put your hands on him, hoe. Bitch, put your hands on him, hoe. Bitch, what? I got him, bitch. That's my bitch. You can have him. You can have him. How about that? You can have him. You can have him. You can have this bitch ass. All y'all. Both of you bitches. You can have this bitch ass. And it's a security check, hoe. You can have this bitch ass. Yeah. What it is. If, I, if, if it's all this, tell me what it is. If it's all this, you can have it. Tell me. Tell me. I don't know. I don't know. You know what you mean? You don't know. Talk about this. Really? But what it is? Tell me what it is. I'm through. I'm through. Cause she can play step mama too. What it do? Oh, so she done seen your kids. The bitch done seen your kids, huh? Step She done seen your kids, huh? Nah. I'm gonna die. You can have it home. Go on. Here another. You want to do? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm done with this. Whatever. Hey, we talking about what you, 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 you talking about? You want to talk to us? Can we talk about what I'm talking about? Talk about what I'm talking about? Talk about what? Talk about what? Talk about what? Talk about what? Well, Courtney, how many people do you want to talk to? He want to talk to everybody. Mother talk show around this bitch. Cause you're laying in my bed every night. So you gonna leave? You lay in my bed every night. So you gonna leave? You lay in my bed every night. Can't believe I put up with this for folks. You can have him and all six of the kids. You can have all six of the kids. Yeah, now, nah, bitch, you said he was your yeah. ass. He with you every night. Yeah. That's what you say. You want him so much, he though. He pay my mother bills, though. Yeah. He pay my bills, though. He pay my bills, though. No. No. You ain't gonna talk to me. Go deal with Ranchy. No, go deal with Ranchy. I'm gonna talk to you. No, you ain't gonna do I want to talk about this in front of the camera, man. Now you, I want to talk to you, and I want to talk to her, and who the want to be with? Right now, can we talk about it right now? I don't be confused, my Come on, can we please just talk about this? Y'all be what? Now you going to talk about it now. Make your choice. You Make what choice? Y'all get a call, and your bitch. You can have it, ho. Make what choice? You can have our sister and kids. I ain't no hoe. Yeah, you a hoe, because you second, no bitch. How long you been with him, ho? How long you been with him, ho? Four years, ho. Four years in one, ho. Bitch. You in her. Get off me. Move. I'm calling you right. Hell no, don't gotta, call me. I got work, I come through. You. Ain't paying now on her damn bills, all them damn kids he got. He ain't paying child support, get his mother money. Humiliated by her boyfriend's recklessness, Kelly ponders the next step to take. In a moment, we'll disclose her plans to come. But now, Sebastian Asner comes in to fill in the blanks after he confronted his boyfriend on Cheaters. Going with Joey and the crew and seeing them together, I, I don't know, I can't even, it, it was hell. That's the best way to describe it. It was crazy, just like, wow, I can't believe this, like in front of my face. What the hell is this? Uh, bro, what is that? Who the f is that? Who the f is that, who, who is that no. actually? What are you doing here? What the f are you doing here actually? Chilling. Why are you here? We are now trying to work things out. It's it's hard, but you know, you just take it a day at a time. And 
Right now, Brian's trying to earn his trust back by pretty much catering to the, my little every beck and call. Like, he does everything that you could possibly think of and, you know, still ask, is there anything else I can do? You know, I say jump, he says how high. It's kind of cute, actually. And to be honest with you, I'm perfectly okay with that. You're a lying ass mother. So? Nothing ass mother. Bitch, get your hands up, bitch. What is your problem? You, bitch. <laughs> well, you guys, easy, gentlemen. Gentlemen, calm down. <laughs> Bryson, the guy Brian was caught with, I haven't had any contact with him. As far as I, I know, Brian hasn't had any contact with him. But I find it kind of funny, though, that I still have a piece of his glasses from when I broke him at the lake. No, that's not necessary. Let's calm this down. Brian, come on, man. <laughs> Get them apart. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really thankful, you know, that I had cheaters and Joey and everyone to help me realize what was going on before it got too far and out of hand. But like I said, we're just taking it a day at a time and he's got to earn some trust again. After the confrontation, Kelly Carter realizes that the man of her dreams was playing her for a fool all along. After meeting with her pastor, Kelly feels she is ready to put this behind her and start anew. I never cheated on Kelly. She can believe what she wants to, but I can't help it if she's crazy. Courtney claims that this is another in a long line of delusions, and he is happy to be done with the relationship. Friends, words, Eli comes to question her actions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Before this relationship, all my past relationships were with other men. And um, Tanya was always just like that best friend that was like always, we were always just really cool. And um, she was in an abusive relationship and my relationship with Anthony wasn't really working out. And so we hooked up and basically been together ever since. It's been about two years now. So, I don't know, kind of working in that direction towards marriage, possibly. Tanya Peterson, age 24, a courier dispatcher suspected of delivering love notes to another man. Cheaters Intel units surround the suspect's place of employment. Near lunchtime, Cheaters agents spot their mark leaving work and driving across town to a restaurant. When Peterson arrives, she promptly greets an unknown gentleman who waits for her outside the establishment. The pair go inside and grab a table. Cheaters investigators note the overly familiar tone to the meal as the suspect caresses her date's hands. Well, anytime I try to arrange like a date night or lunch or surprise her, like I'll call or text her and like she just either she won't answer or like if I call, she'll text me back saying she's at work, she's doing this, she's out with her girls, like she can never, she can never hang out. Like she, basically she just blows me off. And lately I just noticed like she just, when I try to touch her, like she pulls back, she, she winces, like, and then I, like she, she won't, she never touches me anymore. Like we just, I don't know. I don't know what happened because the sex used to be like amazing. After finishing the meal, Peterson leads her gent back to her SUV. The man gets into the vehicle with her. The unsuspecting duo drive away unaware of the cheater's mobile unit on their tail. The suspect stops at a nearby but secluded spot. After a short while, Peterson commandeers the SUV back to the front of the building and drops off her unknown male friend at his vehicle. The suspect then drives back to work and that ends the day of surveillance. I took a chance and, and trusted like my heart instead of my head. Like my head always told me like, you guys are better off as friends, but I trusted my heart and like if she's cheating on me, I don't think I don't think it would be possible to forgive her. I don't know how to let her go, but I don't think it would be possible to forgive her. I don't know what I would do. Cheaters investigators continue the stakeout of the suspect's workplace. 
When Peterson leaves for the day, a mobile squad tails her to her destination, which happens to be a restaurant. After a few minutes, the suspect emerges with a to-go bag. Peterson takes off, followed closely by her cheater's shadow. The suspect arrives at an unfamiliar apartment complex. Peterson takes her bag into one of the apartments. Several hours pass before the suspect and her paramour, now identified only as Leo, emerge from the apartment. The gentleman escorts Peterson to her SUV. As Leo turns back to his domicile, Peterson heads home to a disheartened Eli. Once again, the cheater's team follows Peterson from her job. The suspect pulls up in front of her companion's apartment. Leo steps out of the shadows and joins her in the vehicle. The illicit pair drive to a shopping center. As the two cross the parking lot, cheater's operators note the suspect holds hands with her secret boyfriend. Peterson and Leo enter a restaurant and grab a cozy table near an exit. A while later, Peterson and Leo gleefully leave the eatery. Shadowed by the cheater's mobile unit, the sneaky couple return to Leo's apartment. Both suspect and companion go inside. The cheater's team waits hours before spotting Peterson coming out of the apartment alone. The cheater's surveillance team wraps up the case before contacting Eli. Coming up, the confrontation. Upon confirming the suspect's deceitful actions, Cheaters arranges a meeting with Eli to prove his girlfriend's guilt. With great apprehension, Eli mans up and views the footage to confirm his worst fears. Elijah, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out this afternoon. As you know, we have conducted our investigation. Are you prepared to see what we've come up with? Definitely want to see what, what you guys have come up with. Fair enough. On this day of our investigation, Elijah, we're following Tanya to her workplace. Fortunately, she stops at a restaurant instead. She grabs some food, gets into her vehicle, and she leaves the restaurant parking lot. A while later, she arrives at this apartment complex. That's when we see her get out of her vehicle, and she walks inside. Some hours pass. Some hours pass. We see this unknown male. Do you recognize him? Yo, that's my brother. That's your brother? That's, hold on. That's definitely my brother. We see your brother walk Tanya out to her vehicle. She gets in and she leaves. That's up. That is definitely very screwed up. Yeah. I completely agree. On this day of our investigation, we follow Tanya from work. A few moments later, she stops in the street in front of what I see to be your brother's apartment complex at this point. He gets into the vehicle and they drive away. As our detectives follow, they arrive at a shopping center. That's when you see the two of them get out of the vehicle and they walk over to a restaurant. Once great. they go inside, they get seated together. Now they're having dinner. Having dinner, sharing great. drinks. Great. Being rather playful. Now, Tanya receives a phone call, Elijah, and what you're about to hear is the audio from that. She actually steps outside of the building. What you're about to hear is the audio. Tell me if you remember this. I love you. Yo, what the f I, yo. She Who said, does that? After finishing up that phone conversation and lying to you, saying that she was with her girlfriend, I can't believe she, she goes back that. inside and finishes her meal with your brother. After the meal, your brother goes back, gets dropped off as a residence by Tanya, and she goes in with him. A few hours later, a few hours later, she emerges fixing her garments <laughs> to her vehicle. <laughs> yeah. And she leaves. So basically, she's hooking up with my brother. Listen, man, I understand that you're pissed off. So at this point in time, I know their exact location. They're at a paintball place that is very close paintball to Paintball place, though. That was our first date. 
Yeah. So listen, Elijah, listen to me. Why don't we get on the road, our lead detective's already at the location, and let's go bust him. Are you ready? Yeah. Right, right this now, way. yeah. So this is our location. This is it. All right, go ahead and pull up. <laughs> Gomez? Yeah. I think I recognize you, man. But be careful, they're shooting right now. All out? Yeah, all out. Come all on. out? All right, let's go. Everybody out. Everybody watch this. Then we're going to come down the hallway. And then we're going to ambush them when they come down the hallway. All right. All right, got it. All right. Good? Good? Yo, what the f***? What the f***? Yeah. Where are you guys going? Where are you guys yeah. running to? Where are you guys running to? I'll do what you do this. I'll, yo, hold on. You sure you want to go there? Yeah, hell yeah, move. Sure? What the f It's yo. a live firing spot. You sure you want to go in there? Yeah, yo, what the f You sure? Yo, where are you? Yo, put that f down. Yeah, yeah, what the f is going on? Who are you people? Get away from me. Put that down. down. What are you doing, man? Put that what down. What are you doing? This way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Cheaters. Coming up, the conclusion. They're at a paintball place, and let's go bust them. What the That's a live firing spot. You sure you want to go in there, bro? Yeah. What, that, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> this way, this way, this way. I'm Clark Gable with cheaters. Put that down. Get away from me. I don't even know who you are. Stop running. What happened with What are you talking about? What am I talking about? Get away from me. You cheated on him with another man. No, I did not. Are you away from me? Let alone his own brother. You don't remember that? You don't remember that? Get away from me. You don't remember that at all? You! Bitch, yo! Look, do you remember this thing? Do you remember this? Yeah, when you were we out? had lunch. You, you had, had lunch. lunch. I had lunch with a friend. With a friend, with my brother? Yes, your brother. And then you went friend. back to his apartment for hours? Yeah, we watched a movie. You watched a movie. Are you kidding me? So I have a question yo, for stop. you. Yo, stop. Yo, yo, I have a question for Calm you, down. Tanya. Nothing happened. So you go out with your brother, nothing happens now. When nothing you, happened. When you're for in the hours. restaurant sharing a meal with this man, you step out for a moment because you get a phone call. You had Hell yeah! Insane. Are you insane? You lying ass crazy. bitch, I'll f you. The only reason why he did this is because you couldn't just be honest with him in the first place. Hell yeah, well, you're maybe. a liar! You remember this why phone call? You Do you remember this? When well, you told me to eat ramen, are you stupid? Yeah, there's food at the house. No, there wasn't food at the house. And you're at dinner with my brother? When you say what you're lying ass bitch, Tonya, you lying ass bitch. You're talking now. You are crazy. Tonya. This is crazy. I'm crazy. You're my brother, and I'm crazy. This is insane. This is not this is insane. You see the evidence? Yeah, I see that. There's nothing on there. Are you, you kidding this? me? Listen. Listen. You're, You're lying. Your girl? You with your girl? Because. So? Because what? Oh. So I lied. Like girlfriend. So you. So you. So my brother and I. Oh, you want me to deal with it? What the fuck is he at? You want me to deal with it? You have nothing to say about this? You have nothing to say about this. Okay, I lied. I was with your brother that night. You know, you're the only girl that I cared about, and you have nothing to say about this. Walking out hand in hand. You yeah. don't have yeah. Leave her alone. Got it. Get hey. the off me. Get the off, man. Yo, hey. Calm the down. See what I'm talking about? It's like these are two blood brothers, and this is what you've done. See what the you did? You see what you've done? I'm sorry. Home wrecking ass bitch. I'm not a home wrecker. We have to have a home to wreck. Oh, we don't. Yeah, we don't have a home to wreck because you're my brother. That's why. Okay, can we speak without all of these? 
please. No. Wait. We need to talk about what happened. No. Will you step outside for a second? Yes, if y'all will back up off me with all this shit happening. We gotta clear out of here. We got a game start. You guys gotta clear out of here. We got a game start. Let's go. Come you guys on. gotta clear out. You gotta game. Lying ass bitch. Such a liar. You have nothing to say. Tonya, I understand a simple mistake, all right? I understand Yo. that. But this, this is a little bit more than a mistake. Are you calm down? Me, you want me to calm down? Okay. Like, what do you have to say about this? I mean, you, you completely lied to me. Yo, are you kidding me? Let us explain. Explain what? Explain what? Yo. Watch out. What you want, Leo? Leo. Yes. Leo, that's your brother, man. Come on, dude. Y'all know no, 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 each other's sides your whole life. Just calm, stay up. Let us Tony, talk about talk. it. Why would you let it get to this point? Uh, and what was she telling you why all this was going on, Leo? Man, right together is all, man. I, I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't want to talk to you. We're done. I tried to tell nope, you. We're I done. Loved a certain way. What are you talking about? You don't want to be with a female. You want to be with a man. I wanted to marry you. Yes. No. No. I wanted to marry. I wanted I to have children. I don't want to be somebody's beard. Yo. You. Somebody's beard. Somebody's, somebody's beard. Somebody's beard. Yeah. Give me the keys to my truck. No. 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 Give me the keys to my truck. Like an adult. Give me the keys to my truck. Give me the keys to my truck. No, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. This is ultimately up to you right now. No, nah, both of them. I'm done. You're done? I'm done. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go. Get out of here. Go. Get a better job from a dude anyways, bitch. Oh, you. You're ridiculous, yeah. Get away from me. Tanya! Disgusted by his girlfriend's deceitful actions, Eli Marks recognizes the difficult decisions he must make. Later, Cheaters updates you on the path he takes. But now, Susan Charnell returns to update us on how her life has changed since being caught with her best friend's boyfriend on Cheaters. So being busted felt uh, very embarrassing, uh, pretty shocking. I couldn't believe that you know, she had you guys follow us for as long as she did. Um, I didn't know what to say. I turned turned the corner every chance I could from the cameras. It was very embarrassing. Oh Hell no. Oh, oh, oh. What is going on? Oh. Whoa. Baby, 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 baby. Oh, 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 oh. It's, it's, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, we're playing pool. We're playing pool. We're playing pool. <laughs> It never occurred to me that we would get caught, especially in the way that we did. We thought we were, you know, being very low key about everything. Um, of course, at the time, I really didn't care because, you know, we weren't friends anymore. We wanted to tell her. <laughs> but what happened? They're still living together. I know. When you put your eyes up like that, that kind of looks like you don't really care. I mean, that's you. You guys have been friends for 10 years. It's a very oh, long no, time. Oh, no. There's been a disconnect since. I had to move out, okay? You think that played a role in the disconnection of your friendship? I can't help how I feel. After we got caught, um, when we decided to be together, we tried it out for a good three months. And I started noticing little things here and there, um, some of the same kind of lies that he would tell April. He came home from work one night and he fell asleep with his phone on his lap. So I went through his phone and I did not like what I found. I cut it quick. I, I didn't put up with it. So we are no longer together. I'm very sorry. I know how April feels now. I can't believe after you know, everything Derek and I went through that he would cheat on me as well. Um, I should have known, once a cheater, always a cheater. 
Um, since then, I've been very focused on my career. I just started an airbrush tanning company. Um, things are going great, and I'm really not looking to meet anyone anytime soon. Following the confrontation, Eli Marks admits he made a mistake dating his BFF. When asked by Cheater's producers about what he plans to do concerning his relationship with his brother, Eli emphatically declares, Leo is dead to me. It takes pressing the point by Cheater's producers before Tanya Peterson finally admits to her responsibility in the affair. Clearly angered by getting caught in the tryst, the suspect attempts to spin the situation to her benefit alleging that Eli isn't truly into her at all. As for the suspect's companion, Leo refuses to comment to cheaters on his involvement. Hey, please. Faster! Yeah, baby. I'm going to roll over the ladies, ladies. Get out of my face! Oh, my gosh! You are a cheater. Now you're a comedian. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. Real reality television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Patience and understanding are traits that Jake Abbott was seemingly born with. His girlfriend's recent behavior, however, has been taxing his tolerance. As she pulls away, emotionally and physically, Jake aches for the truth before an anticipated but uncertain proposal. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. The things have been changing is she's just kind of been off lately. She hasn't been the same. When I talk to her on the phone, she's just kind of, it's almost like she's not even there. The other day she went, she said she was going to lunch with a friend. And uh, later on that day, I saw the friend at my restaurant and I was like, hey, how was lunch? And she said, what lunch? And so I was like, you didn't have lunch with Amy? She was like, no. I think she might be uh, seeing my good friend uh, they've been friends for a long time. They knew each other when we met. They said that they've never had a relationship, but I feel that it might be the same as when I first met her. And she's repeating herself. I mean, she's had trouble with relationships in the past. Uh, she comes from an abused home. So I, you know, I'm kind of worried. I love her with all my heart. And I was planning on proposing to her at the place where we first met, at the restaurant, in front of all our friends together. And now there's just so many red flags coming up. I'm skeptical. Uh, I already bought the ring and just was getting ready to ask. And then this came up and I just love her so much. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Amy Graff, age 29, a clothing buyer suspected of presenting herself in a singularly obtainable fashion. Investigation day one. In anticipation of movement, cheaters operatives form a perimeter around the suspect's place of employment. As lunchtime nears, boundary agents view the suspect, Amy Graff, exiting her boutique and entering her car. Mobile units engage pursuit, following Graf to the restaurant managed by her boyfriend, complainant Abbott. She enters, and once inside, is supplied with an exotic cocktail by Jake. Graf grabs her drink and settles in a nearby booth. While she nurses her cocktail, a waiter stops by, offering his expert service. Graf is supposedly satisfied while waiting for her diligent dearest. But while Jake tends to the restaurant's customers, Graf takes a bathroom break. Agents covering the interior pay little attention to the ladies' room, but they become curiously alert after 15 minutes pass with no sign of the suspect. While deciding if a recon team is required, agents are then stunned by the appearance of the unknown male waiter emerging from the women's restroom. No less than a minute later, Graf exits and wastes little time departing the restaurant, leaving Jake to clean up the mess while she returns to work. Investigation day four. Mobile units connect with suspect Graf after she closes shop early and arrives at Jake's restaurant. 
While Amy slings down her suds, the unknown male waiter, whose identity is withheld, saunters up to the bar and portrays himself as everybody's best friend. The waiter eventually bids adieu by downing his third brew and shaking the hand of his boss. With knowledge of Jake's mistrust of the waiter, agents keep a close eye on Graf once she also finishes her libation and leaves the restaurant. Mobile units track the suspect down the road to an out-of-the-way wine tavern. She enters and is warmly welcomed by the after-hours waiter. The two settle at a table. Graf's companion pours her a deep glass of Cabernet before they share a toast to their crowning seclusion. It's apparent that the waiter's true thirst is for Graf. He grabs her head and pulls her mouth to his. They finally break apart, and with a jerk of his head, the couple depart the winery. The duo is discovered inside Graf's car, continuing their surreptitious smooching. After some time, a laughing Graf pokes and prods her boy toy out of the car before she returns home for the evening. Investigation day 10. Mobile units begin tracking the suspect once she leaves her job quite some time after closing. She arrives at a local drugstore, and before agents can organize the ground team, she exits. Her purpose becomes quite clear once she pauses by the trash can and rips open a package of condoms. She stashes the three-pack into her purse and quickly returns to the road. While Graf plans to play it safe at the waiter's house, it's Jake who's left unprotected as exhibited by this recorded phone call. Appalled by the proof, Cheater's intelligence bring the facts back home and begin preparing a dossier for Jake's ultimate review. Coming up, the confrontation. With an abundance of evidence confirming his girlfriend's betrayal, Jake is summoned to observe the findings. Tense and anxious regarding the ultimate outcome, Jake prepares himself for the awful truth. Jake, I know this is last minute. Forgive me for jumping into this expeditiously, but obviously time is of the essence. Our investigators have information regarding your relationship that they felt was crucial for you to see as soon as possible. Jake, we began our investigation of your girlfriend, Amy, on this afternoon. Around about lunchtime, she exits her place of employment, gets into her car and was followed until she arrived, actually at the establishment where you work. She comes up to the bar, grabs a drink, then goes and sits at a booth, presumably to enjoy some lunch. We see at some point that one of your employees stops by the table, greets her, they have a small chat. Now, this is the person that I think you may have expressed some concerns with in the past. Is that correct? Yes. All right. A short time later, she appears to receive a text, gets up, and excuses herself to the restroom. Sometime later, we see your employee exiting the restroom, followed shortly after by Amy. She quickly moves out of the restroom, jumps into her car and leaves. On this day, Jake, we followed Amy after she got off work late. Our detectives followed her as she stopped at a drugstore pharmacy. She goes in, she made some purchases, but while exiting on the way back to her car, we see her remove 
one of the items that she purchased from the bag, places them in her purse, and discards the box that they were enclosed in. From there, Amy goes directly to his residence. And later that evening, a call was made for some pizza. We see the delivery man arrive, answers the door in a robe, pays the man, and goes back inside. Jake, that was last evening. That was last night? That's happened before in your relationship. It has. It? <clears throat> what was her explanation the last time this happened? Last time it happened, she just said that she, uh, she just fell asleep, she had too much to drink, was hanging out, fell asleep. And it seemed like likely, you know, they used to be friends. Obviously, maybe she was lying. Let me give our detective a call, let him know that we're on our way, and see if there have been any changes. Hey, we picked up Jake, and we're on our way right now. Everyone still there? No movement? She's still there. OK. All right, fine. We know the address, and we'll, so we'll just park on a side street, and we'll look for the detective. Gotcha. All right, see you in a second. All right, there he is. There he is. Everybody load out, load out, load yeah, out. Right there. Go. Load out, load out. Do with the long hair. Load out. Yeah. What's going on? Huh? Amy? Whoa, whoa. Mother guys. Get in here. What's the car doing here? Why is the car here? I don't know, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. What is all this? Coming up, the conclusion. right over there. As soon as he steps out, that's when we go. Amy's car doing here? I don't know, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. What is all this? Give me the keys. Uh -uh. Give me the keys. Uh-uh. The keys. Oh. Okay, okay. Get <laughs> this? Amy is not here. Pizza? What are you talking about? Bull Amy is not here, dude. What are you doing here? Get out of there! No! What is going on? Oh god! What is this? What is this? What is this? The booze? Just get out of my face. Everybody hey, why do you bring all these people? What are you doing? What? Seriously? Yeah. yeah. What is going on here? Well, I think you kind of do though, don't you? No, 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 I don't. Amy, get over here. Get over here. Yeah, what the f are you doing? Get the f off me! Why are your clothes out here? This, I'm calling the cops. My lawyer is the best in town. It's gonna be the Tyler Brown show, mother. Okay, terrific. Yeah, okay, so everybody get the f out of my house. We Go. got good lawyers too. Go. Go. Well, did you talk in the first place? Yeah, all of this off of my f oh, Over here. Shut up. Get your ass out of here. You're fired. Yeah, I'm totally burning all your Magic the Gathering cards, mother. Illusions. Good, I didn't want to close it out anyway. That place sucks. Why were you... What, 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 you okay, well, no one's going to air your or broadcast image without your approval, so you don't have to worry about that if you're concerned about privacy. Been waiting. I've had this for six months. What the waiting for the right time. The Putting all of her naked pictures on reddit.com. Oh, so real gentleman. Oh, really? Oh, really? No, what the... Will you marry me? I just... You guys are so... Okay, this is seriously crazy. Wow. Is this because I didn't buy you the porcelain knife set? You <laughs> seriously, this does not need to be on. You're I can't crazy. You involved well, is this is this a joke for you? Wow, and you're throwing at me. All right, cool. Keep it. Serious now. Serious. Damn, that's nice. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. I don't have a job. Can we just talk about this without the cameras? No, talk about it now. That's why we're here. Can we just? This is your fault. This is all your fault. Come with. Come over here. Is this a joke for you, though? Well, no, not really. But, uh, you know, having everybody storm into my house when I'm going my way to work is kind of hard to deal with right now, so... Why the would you do this? What's going on? You could have just talked to me. I mean, you've been working all the time. Hey, why don't you, why don't you take that somewhere else? Why don't you get it off of my property? Oh. Yeah. 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 Guys. No, wait! Stop! Stop! 
Don't come in tonight. You're done. Seriously. Right. What are you doing? Were you concerned, I'm going Amy? to my car. It's half my car. You don't pay for this car. Go. Get out. We can figure it I out. I need to get out of here. Well, uh, probably not. The, not no. Probably no. That's probably not a good idea, bro. <laughs> I don't know where the keys went. Christ. You guys are freaking me out. I can't even think. Where are your keys, sucker? Give me your keys. Where are her keys at? Hey, why don't you take her pants oh, while that... you're out? Get out of here. Go. Who's that then? You got him? Yes. Everybody. Out. Go. Yeah, get that out of my face. Go. 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 Seriously, get it out of my face. Go. Go. I'm driving. I don't trust you right now, you're too emotional. I'm driving. We're, good. We're just going. We're driving around, talk. Okay. I, I just going to buy video games, <laughs> hair ties. Stop it with the video games. Hey, you forgot those. Just stay, just. Get in the car. Are, are you okay to drive? I'm fine. Are you sure you're gonna be all right? I know you're a little amped up right now and I don't want to I'm fine. let this escalate into anything else. Okay, sure. And don't hesitate if you need anything else. All right. Thanks for all your help. And good luck to both of you. Following the confrontation, Jake calls into question his brash actions. At the end of the show, we'll reveal his final answer. But next, Casey Potts comes in to explain her part in the affair with Thelma Gosling's husband when caught red-handed on cheaters. Didn't really know what to think. Didn't know who all that was in my face, cameras and people, and then having um, his wife show up in my face just kind of shocked me all. I'm not really sure how to describe it. I mean, it's a whirlwind of stuff. It's like a tornado hitting you and you've fallen apart. What's going on? Oh, what? Damn. Oh, my. Who are you? Oh. Who are you? Who are you? What in the world? I'm his girlfriend. You yeah. Bring this here. Yeah. Well, Brandon, what, were you gonna say anything to her? Where, where would it? Ha where would it have here. to happen? Not here. It wasn't gonna happen here, but not, not like this. Well, how? I mean, it's not like you didn't have it'd enough been, time. It'd been something totally different than this right now. You have a child. Yeah, I do. Right? There's I do. nine months there. Yeah. How long there is this relationship going on? A couple months. Well, I was upset. I mean, you date a guy for six months and you think you know him and you hang out every night and every other night or after he gets off work and you're not real sure. I'm just a firm believer, once a cheater, always a cheater. And they're always going to go down that path. I don't think men can change in general. It doesn't matter if they're changing or if they change their shoes or how they leave the house. Um, Men just can't change. I didn't even know he was married. He doesn't wear a ring. We go out every other night, so I mean. Where's your ring? Where's your ring? Where's the ring? It's at the house. You stood in for God and everybody and said those vows. Yes, I I think it's wise that you know you what the person that you're involved with, right. you know what they're capable of. Of course, I'm, I'm glad I know that. <laughs> Okay. I got a ride home from the producer, and um, we I, we went from there. I just went with my friend that night and hung out and haven't really talked to him much. I just keep myself busy doing work and um, just going to, like I said, going to doctor visits and exercising, trying to keep the baby healthy. That's my main concern. I'm not really worried about anybody entering my life right now. Despite his girlfriend's lack of fidelity, Jake Abbott is ready to give her another chance. He states that his love for her is eternal, and one indiscretion is not enough to douse the flame he carries for her. When questioned about the affair, Amy Graff admits to looking for a way to sabotage her relationship with Jake. She states, I have a hard time being loved by someone. I've had really bad things happen to me in the past, and I'd rather leave on my own terms. But I guess I'm willing to give this a shot if Jake is willing to forgive me and let me be me. 
The comments provided by Ms. Graff's companion 